lovely, lovely imps. It is time for us at long last to react to the star-studded debate between Emma Vigland of the Majority Report and Tim Pool of Tim Pool Beanie Industries. I don't know, whatever. Uh, this has been a much discussed uh, topic. I've wanted to react to it for a little while. It happened like 10 days, what? 12 days ago. So. In internet time, that may as well have been 400 years ago. I am basically digging up a dinosaur bone. Just kidding, f that mentality, straight up. Uh, it's okay for things to be a couple days old when we react to them. I, I suspect that I'll have a lot to say about this. I have seen three or four clips total from this entire conversation, and I wanna watch as much of it as possible together with you. Uh, most of it I'm going in completely blind on, so I'm fairly excited for us to get to watch this at long last together. I'm not going to spend any more time rambling on about it because I don't have much else to say. I just want to react to it together. Let's do it! Tim Pool and Emma Vigland at long last. Oh, I wanted to say I really like Emma Vigland. That's my bias. I really like Emma Vigland, and I always have. I've been a big fan of Emma Vigland on the Majority Report. Uh, oh yeah, I should say, I'm I'm a long time listener to the Majority Report. I've been listening to the Majority Report for like almost 10 years, right? right? No, more like seven years. That's more accurate. Seven years is a little more accurate. Um, I really, really like them, always have. They were my introduction to the left in a, in a meaningful sense and I think Emma Vigland is totally poggers. So let's do this. Got some people, we got uh, uh, Jack and Seamus. So thank you all for that. This is the first The Culture War podcast we're doing live as we're uh, now getting into the, the purpose for what this show is. When we do shows on Timcast IRL at eight or so PM, we'll often have people come in who are uh, uh, either disagree with us on certain issues and uh, or, or that's primarily it. When they do, the show transforms from topical news into political and cultural debate. Mm -hmm. And so we decided we need to make mm -hmm. a specific mm -hmm. show that just handles those conversations and expands upon them so that we can actually get to the, the, the core of what people think, feel, why they want certain policies and why they don't. And a topical news show doesn't really work for that. So Friday mornings, you know, here's what we're going to do. And we were posting this at 1 p.m. Uh, before, but now we'll probably end up doing it live just uh, because. So without further ado, without wasting any of your time, we've got two awesome guests. Uh, Sean, do you oh, want to- Oh yeah, I remember uh, Emma mentioning that. I remember that Emma um, Emma mentioned on Majority Report that there that they said it was gonna be pre-recorded at first, and then at the last minute, they said it was gonna be live. And that she was like, why, the, why would you do it that way? That's really weird, not that it, mattered because she said that she had preferred it live anyway and like he tim pool insisted that it was going to be pre-recorded not live and then at the last minute said it was going to be live which to me just makes me think knowing that tim pool tim pool is kind of a dumb guy did he think that they were going to try and do a sam cedar switcheroo like they did to to steven crowder on h3h3 and if so well again I'm trying to put myself into dumb guy brain. Why would they ever repeat that again? And secondly, Tim Pool already debated Sam Cedar and looked like an absolute jackass. Um, it was one of the funniest debates I've ever seen in my entire life. For those of you who don't remember, that's the one where Tim Pool goes, have you ever seen the Avengers Infinity War? And then Sam Cedar went, uh, no. And then Tim Pool went, well, um, um, well, there's this guy named Thanos, and you're basically Thanos. Thanos is a bad guy. And then Sam Cedar literally just said, I don't care. And it completely defeated Tim Pool because he had nothing else to follow up with. It was, can we just, can I just, I'm sorry, I have to play this. I gotta, I gotta play the clip. Just the, I don't care, okay? Oh, can I get just the, I don't care? Oh no, nobody's got just the clip. Oh, okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll just play it from and here then. And he's like a nice debater for a while. <laughs> you know what one guy actually is? I don't care. <laughs> yeah, so, so for instance, and, and I admit it's, it's, uh, 
I'll, I will I'll tell you something you won't oh, like to hear, though. I'm willing to tell you myself if that, oh. uh, that's the outcome. But, but I'll, I'll tell you something you're not going to want to hear, and, and I admit it's, it's uh, I'll, I'll call it dickish. Uh, utilitarianism is typically the villain in most movies. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> utilitarianism is um, the villain in most films, you know. In most um, Marvel movies, that utilitarian is the bad guy, and Sam's just like, I don't fucking care. Incredible, masterful level. Just absolutely beautiful. So, I, again, that was a bit of a tangent. I don't know why he was scared of that. Really weird to do that. Uh, maybe it literally was just poor planning on his part, but seems like a weird thing to do, to like insist to your guest that it's like, no, this is gonna be pre-recorded. Actually, we're doing it live, let's go. Introduce yourself first. Oh, I'm Sean Fitzgerald. Uh, I do YouTube at the actual Justice Warrior. I cover primarily criminal justice related issues. And I'm. Do you guys remember when I debated the <laughs> loser? Anybody remember that? Any old school Demon Mama fans remember when I debated actual Justice Warrior? Anybody? Anybody? I debated actual Justice Warrior, and uh, he got so shut down that he basically checked out for the rest of the conversation to the degree that he like he got all petulant and just stopped participating in the conversation. It was just sitting there going like this and fake yawning and being like, it was so fucking funny. Oh man, you guys can go just look it up. It was on a hippy dippy podcast. Somebody will, somebody, lovely fans who remember which hippy dippy podcast it was, please link it in the chat for everyone to watch. Happy to be here for your maiden live voyage of the Absolutely. culture war. And Emma, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm oh, Emma. yeah, oh yeah, sorry, one more thing. I gotta be, I gotta be a dirty, a dirty uh, uh, piece of shit here, okay? I need to remind you all of the fact that uh, actual Justice Warrior has a fake YouTube play button that he puts in the background of all of his videos, which is literally the most pathetic thing that I've ever heard of in my entire life. It's so fucking funny. He bought like a 3D printed fake YouTube play button and he puts it in the background of all of his videos to pretend like he's like, apparently like, 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 look, it's fucking cool if you get a YouTube play button. No, 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 you know, no problem. Like, that's cool. Getting a YouTube play button is a, is an accomplishment. That's a big deal. But not if you print it yourself. If you print it yourself, you're just a jackass. It's actually so pathetic. Actual Justice Warrior looks like he eats crayons and swears the, col the, 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 the different colors are different flavors. Bro, straight up. Straight the fuck up. Vigland. I'm the co-host of The Majority Report. Thanks so much, Tim, for, for having me on. I know that uh, it was a little dicey with you and Sam in terms of him uh, coming on, but uh, I'm happy I'm happy that, that, that you had me on. Honestly. Absolutely. I'm glad you came. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, I just want to clear this up because I know that, you know, you didn't want to have Sam on because you called him a grifter, right? Yeah. And part of the reason that you called him that is because you said that, you know, we put your song through a filter on our show. And I just want you to know, I was hosting that day. We don't have the technology to do that, so I did not do that. So there you go. Clar yeah, it was like that up for you. the, the song. So uh, that specific issue was the song. Oh my god, that's right. He got super triggered about that. He accused them of making his music sound worse. We put out, played on your show, had like the mids ripped out of it. We and don't have the technological ability to do that. We're just a bunch of leftists oh. in with like a soundboard. I promise the, you, nothing was intentional. You don't have that. audacity. The, it's free. Well, no. no the, the The issue here is likely I don't really that know. I don't know anything about if you audio don't tech. if you don't have proper <laughs> ingestion, then like the audio is going through a TV or something. It's going to sound really bad. Right. Mm. Tim Pool is the epitome of insecurity. Like no joke. Anything else that you say about Tim Pool, everybody's got their things to say, but Tim Pool is 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 insecurity condensed into a single human being so if, if we were to like play music on the tv and then put the mics up to it everything would be ripped out from it and then if we were to say L listen how bad this sounds it's misleading the average person right thinking well, that yeah that's what the song sounds like when it but 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 i played that and look i mean we're we're here to have a great discussion um i think but it's interesting that even though I played it, that was your justification for calling Sam a grifter. It's not, though. Uh, the issue okay. with Sam was that I put out a tweet where I said, uh, we, we, we try to invite people on the left all the time. They always say no. 
And then Sam tweeted challenge accepted or something to that effect, like I'll mm -hmm. come on. And I was like, oh, this is great because, you know, Sam was actually the first person to ever shout me out ever in my career. Yeah. Uh, praising me. And so I said, we will uh, cover travel accommodation. We'll fly you out. We'll take care of everything. Let me know what, oh, what, what yeah. day works when for you. When Tim Pool started, he like, he, he like played, he, he, he played the news bit really hard. So people gave him a lot of good faith early on. But he's been going a long time. It's been a long time since that shout out, my man. And he said something like the 13th. And I was like, this is fantastic. And then he DM'd me and was like, I'm not coming on your show. And I was yeah, like, yeah, it was because of COVID restrictions. I've seen the DMs. I told him you yeah, should put sure. it on. I've, I've told him you should put it on Twitter, but he's too good of a guy. I well, mean, maybe, maybe. Well, no, will, I published all the clarify. DMs. Yeah. Because then what he did was he then I, I, it's 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 mostly water under the bridge, but he made some comment about me backing out or something. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, and then I, I, I messaged him. I was like, are you kidding, dude? Like, I we're going to pay for everything. And then he was just like, no, I'm not doing it. Are you well, crazy? Well, then uh, just do it like, I mean, I'm sure he'd be down to come down soon and you guys could actually have well, the issue ex has expanded uh, more than that. I mean, so, so at the same time, there was Hassan Piker who also responded to my tweet and he said, I'd love to come. And I said, when can you come? And he said, let's figure out a date. And so I DM'd him and he said, I got to be honest, I'm actually concerned about oh. COVID. And I said, totally get it. No worries, man. Thanks for reaching out. Right. And that was the end of it. Sam, however, used it on like a video and then started tweeting about it because it was drumming up a whole bunch of clicks and views. And I'm like, okay, dude, I get oh, yeah. it. Yeah, Tim Pool has never chased clicks and views. Interacting with this guy is just going to create drama that he uses to get clicks. I mean, the dude's got. Oh, yeah. Tim Pool has never had any controversial guests on the show specifically to get clicks. Like 170 videos about Dave Rubin. Yeah, we do yeah. cover that. I mean, I cover. think part part of what we do is we try to respond to some of the right wing ecosystem on the Internet because there's a vacuum truly left. Um, you guys have a lot more money than the left wing media space. We just try to combat it a little bit. I think the issue with that, I can understand why you'd say that, but it looks like this, this is a great way to kick off the show, actually, yeah. like the start of the culture. Mm -hmm. war. Um, I actually don't think the whatever this space has more money because this is a fractured independent space of varying ideologies tim i'm in your compound right now yeah i'm rich what is that i live what in a one mean? bedroom i mean how did you get rich i started a website took memberships sold ads on videos yeah but the, but the reason that you get ads and that we don't is because you more adequately serve capitalism and we challenge it i get we, we get our ads pulled what do you mean there's there's whole organizations dedicated to getting our all of our ads removed Right, but the proof is in the pudding and where I'm sitting yeah, we, right now. So so this is memberships. This okay. is almost entirely because people pay to become members of our websites. Uh, you know, if if uh, the majority report, they, they, you guys have been around a lot longer than I have. Mm -hmm. Didn't his ads getting pulled was only his YouTube ads, not his personal ads that he runs on his show. He still runs ads on his show directly. And not to mention that his ads only got pulled very recently. He's been running his show for a long time. The dude was raking in ad money, raking in ad money. The inability to uh, provide a, a, a product to a customer does not mean that one political faction has more or is granted more because of capitalism or anything like that. Like if Sam is unable to, I mean, Sam's had way more subscribers than me. He said before that his ad income is eight figures. The fuck? I actually do believe that, though. For a show of his size, yeah, I believe it. For a long, long time. Right, right. And he's been, and he just, like, hit, and I'm not saying this to be, like, mean. I'm saying if he doesn't know how to turn revenue, the issue is more so you need, like, a COO or somebody who's going to say, here's how we provide something to a, a market that generates revenue so we can expand our business. So we're we're uh, better at that here, I suppose, is the easy way to put well, it. Well, no, because what you say here is more attractive to investors and advertisers. I mean, we're basically we no only members and hey, OK, well, other right wing media like the Daily Wire and stuff like that. And even what I'm looking at the rumble, uh, uh, what I don't know, what do you call that uh, logo right there? Looks like mm. a rectangle. That, yeah. I mean, that's a that's a David Sachs. That's a venture capital backed venture, yes, I is. believe. 
um, at the very least, yes, Peter Thiel is. is involved and invested. Oh, yeah. There's no equivalent on the left. Why wouldn't Absolutely you be able not. to get advertisers if like David Pakman and the Young Turks have advertisers? Your content's not like too We do dissimilar. have advertisers. We just have, you know, advertisers that are a, a little bit more within our system of values. And we're trying to combat corporate greed. We don't have a ton of advertisers that I think align with uh leftist or we have advertisers that we try to include in terms of like uh leftist values as well but just by the nature of left versus right it's asymmetrical warfare but but, you guys but, are but honestly you sam just should just put but, the, but you're put passing on advertisers that don't align with your values so yeah. like you have we do those the same options thing. we do literally so we have like four advertisers We're right like four right okay so the our website has no advertisers and it's almost entirely membership funded. Yeah, so I mean, look. Everything here is because people give us 10 bucks a month. It, we're really trying. That might be, let's just, let's be fair to Tim Pool here. That might be true to Tim Pool. That's definitely not true for the Daily Wire. That's definitely not true for fucking Steven Crowder. That's definitely not true for the Blaze.tv. That's definitely not true for OAN News. Definitely not fucking true for uh, Fox News. Sorry, Tim Pool, maybe you yourself personally, and that's a big maybe, okay? I'm just being charitable to Tim Pool here. Maybe Tim Pool is, is an exception to the rule and he's totally viewer supported. He's not, but let's be charitable to Tim Pool. Every other person in the right wing sphere is, that is absolutely not true for every other person in the right wing sphere. <laughs> I'm sorry, let's just remember that. You want to know a great example of this? Here's a perfect example of this. Completely divorced from your general right-left politics. Streamers who refuse to do gambling content because they believe it's unethical will not receive gambling sponsorships. Do you guys remember how much money Trainwrecks made? Hold on. Yeah, how much did Trainwrecks make from gambling? Real quick. Trainwrecks claims to have made $360 million just from sponsored gambling streams. $360 million. That's insane. I want to see if, he, if we've got the breakdown here to what he was being paid for hour, per hour on those. It worked out that he was being paid $30,821 an hour. $30,821 an hour peddling gambling to, uh, to kids on Twitch. Now, somebody who has a principled stance against gambling will never be given a gambling sp sponsorship. So it is fair to say that the pro-gambling uh, a side of things has more money than the anti-gambling side of things. And there's a very similar dynamic at play when it comes to the right versus the left. The right is going to have funding from established moneyed interest, oil, uh, uh, f uh, capital investment firms that are invested in the idea of capitalism being the predominant system, uh, massive corporate donors who are interested in favorable coverage, uh, or at least non-critical coverage of large corporate interests. Those things are not going to go into lefty shows. It's, it really is as simple as that. It's that simple. Thank you, Drizzle, very light Drizzle, very, very much for joining as a chunky imp, chunky imp. Thank you so very much. Deeply appreciate the support. Now this right here is a viewer supported show. Not only do half our videos get demonetized on YouTube, but we don't have any external advertisers. We might never have external advertisers. Uh, if, if, no, if a show doesn't align with my, with my views on the world, uh, or if a, a company doesn't do that, I'm not gonna work, I'm not gonna work with them. That's just how it is. I've always said that and always will. This is a viewer supported show. Thank you very much. Let's continue to cover politics on our program and i think that that's what uh is like our central focus i mean why well, make a about, video about me and music well i mean it was a little fun because it was kind of funny but i mean sam comes from a comedy background as well i would say that i think you misrepresent what our show actually does the first hour the free hour of our program before we go to the membership portion 
is one that we literally have experts on, on social security, on international politics. It's not honestly something that is conducive to it's it's dry. It's not conducive necessarily to a ton of capital investment or advertisers. Um, and right. we're trying so we don't, to make a difference in the world. We don't have investment or sure. we have like four advertisers. Actually, we have zero advertisers. So we got rid of them all. Okay. So we, we ended all of our advertisers. Oh, oh, yeah. Did you just get rid of them now. Why were you saying whatever is whatever, uh, whatever. That, uh, to be fair on the podcast version of things? I think we have like six. On the YouTube oh. side of things, we've actually so got four, zero, and six all at the same time. Dude, come on! Get rid of all. This, it's actually funny because if he had just, if he had just, if he had just sat there and and said, "We only have six advertisers," he would have looked so much better. Now, and actually, Emma might have looked bad by sounding salty by being like, "You get advertisers and we don't." She could have, he could have made her look bad, but now he just looks like a lying idiot who's trying to hide how much money his show actually makes. <sighs> Man, he's so fucking clumsy. Advertisements. So it, now it's just like whatever YouTube does, they do. Right. And then we started our, we're starting our own companies. The reason we, start, we started our own coffee company, it's because, I'm, I'm not gonna say the name of this person, but there are organizations that lie in order to get our ads pulled. And so that's happened to us. Uh, one example is that there is, uh, well, I don't wanna get into too much of it, but there's a, a group that has argued that I have claimed that Donald Trump won in 2020. And they've used that to raise tens of thousands of dollars. Okay. I never said Donald Trump won in 2020. In fact, since Joe Biden got inaugurated, I said Trump lost and these people need to s accept it. Right. Well, I you said there might be a race war. There was that. When did I say that? Uh, I'm not sure. But you also said that. I don't, say, I don't, I don't think that's true. The, 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 the 10 year old who got an abortion, who was raped, you call that a hoax. Have you retracted that statement? Uh, so there's very deep context to that. What we're talking about when but I that's say been hoax, proven, I mean, Charged. Right, but so, the rapist so, has been charged. Oh yeah! By the way, we've talked, we've covered Tim Pool insinuating that there will be a race war. We've covered that on this show, and we never cover Tim Pool. He used to say that a lot more. He used to say that this is like a sign that they want. They're trying to. This is going to make sure that a race war will happen. He'll claim that like um, a law or something will ensure that a race war will happen. And I think, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, I think Somniostatic, I don't have a clip for this, I'll be completely honest. But if I'm not mistaken, he did actually call BLM a race war at one point. He used to say this type of shit all the time. He's avoided it recently. Right, right. And the doctor who provided uh -huh. the abortion, fine. So this is a really good example of the problem in the culture where I would say, See, you don't you don't know what I actually said because I, I I didn't say what you're what you're describing. You did. I just watched it last night. Right. And so what I said was the fact that they politicized this to win a political point is the hoax, not that the child was abused. Oh, How dude. does that constitute a hoax, Tim? So, like, let's say uh, there's a what's a good example of this? Uh, Ahmed Arbery. Ahmed Arbery is a really great example, right? So uh, here's a here's no no, a, no I'm talking about this example though right, the right. one that so, I just brought up. So right, if 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 I can't explain to you that manipulating a story for political gain is the hoax, then I don't know what's what else the to manipulation. Say. Oh man, this is an old story. I have to pull it up. I think the issue was that they were able to actually get the treatment in state, but because of the law, they decided to seek it elsewhere. And I said that is a hoax. I didn't say that it was dude come the fuck on man just own you fucking lied you got you jumped the gun man and you were fucking stupid about it man he's losing he sounds like such a loser we have we have zero advertisers well we have four actually well no actually it's zero well we have six on the podcast so what uh, this is the problem with the culture war man emma vigland outclasses this motherfucker so hard it's not even funny a hoax that the girl was abused. I said, if they could have sought treatment in state under the exemption, I think it was Ohio, right? There was an exemption yes. saying in the cases of abuse, the treatments are permitted, but they decided to make a public statement and leave the state anyway. I said, that is a hoax. It was not a public statement. Um, well, but the, yeah, that, that's my no, point. No, no, rape and incest exemptions are non-actionable. Um, this is like well-documented with abortion activists. 
how long do you think it takes to prove a rape or incest case before you're able to use that car well, to I, actually I don't, get an abortion? Well, doesn't it I, depend on what, how the law is written? Do you have to prove it or does it have to be alleged? I mean, first well, of all, let me, let rape, me just is, that, rape is that one point of real the quick so we can clarify the thing on Sure. I never said it was a hoax that the girl was abused. Okay. That is incorrect. But I mean, but honestly, this is a part and parcel of what you do is you put that kind of statement out there and then you put caveats in to protect yourself. Like um, but me that, saying that someone manipulating a story for political gain is a hoax. Is it's not, not a manipulation. That is the kind of thing that's going to continue to happen as abortion restrictions <clears throat> happen throughout the country. It's an it was opinion. a particularly egregious example used to shine light on broader restrictions on abortion in this country. I mean, it's an opinion, but you haven't retracted yes. it. It's false. Uh, I'm, it's not false. If there is a Dude, story. You just got clapped, man. You, I don't know if he realizes how bad he sounds here. Of course he doesn't. Or maybe he's just trapped in his own studio. And the story is exaggerated or manipulated in an effort to sway people into believing one political faction over the other. You are engaging in a hoax. I mean, no, isn't that what you what guys do is. when you post like extreme videos of crime and things like we that. We don't do that. What are, we, what, are we, what are you talking about? I mean, you respond to videos that are taken completely out of context, isolated like instance, I instances. I don't think you watch the show because that doesn't sound I cool mean, I do. do a little bit. No, you don't. Because yeah, we don't I do. do that. Yeah, yes, I, you do. <laughs> I, I, that, well, that's not true because we don't do that. In fact, one of the points we make specifically... In, in his debate with Lance, he pulled completely out of context literally was like what about people getting shoved in front of, of of subway trains we watched that fucking live him just with no context what about people getting pushed in front of subway trains you he does do that and emma's correct she should she should have i wish she had a clip on on hand here that she wrote on a piece of note paper because i feel like this would have been a spot where having a clip and a timestamp going hey here's the episode and here's the timestamp would have been really powerful Specifically is uh, you show subway crime to talk about all of these inflated yeah, so, crime so, numbers. And, crime and, is down in New York City in and, 2023, and, and, and by every down, metric. Down compared to what? Down compared to 2021 and don't, 2022. Don't change, don't change when, the subject. No, no, right? no, you you I'm accused not. us no, no, of publishing minute, videos we don't minute. publish. If it's down in 20 compared to 2021, <laughs> and there was a giant year-over-year -year increase from 2020 to 2021. Then you're talking about something that's down. It wasn't giant. It was a small bump from the a pandemic. A 47 percent increase in homicide in the city of New York is not a small bump. It was homicides are have been on a precipitous decline since the 70s, since the 80s, okay. since the 90s. There was a bump because of desperation in the pandemic, There's, and now it's back down in 2023. So, like, that's irrefutable. That's the NYPD's own data. That's on all major crimes: murders, rapes, grand larcenies, so uh, robberies. <clears throat> This is an argument I'm often confronted with, and it's actually pretty terrible. So crime is down from the peak for sure, right? In some years in New York City, we had 2,100 murders. I think that's the largest ever in the history of the city of New York. However, my standard isn't, it's not as bad as the worst time in the history of the city of New York. When I We only need 20 more likes on my video until we hit 666, which is pretty based since you're watching Demon Mama. If there are 20, 20 of you out there who haven't pressed like yet, smack that like button. And if we go past it, that just means we're stronger than the devil. That's just how it works. Let's continue. See, mm -hmm. murders jump year over year from about 319 so 469. What do you mean year That's over year? The two years that I just Year listed? over year, as in from 2020 to 2021. That would be a year yes, over year yes. increase. That is a dramatic increase. And it's the largest since, I believe, 2010. The greatest year over year increase of all time in the city of New York, by the way. But it's all but the way back to 2010 again. numbers. It's down yeah, It's down this compared is... to the increase, but it's not down compared to 2019. This was a once in a lifetime pandemic where people's desperation and their mental health was severely harmed. Um, people were out of work and that kind of desperation. Was... <laughs> Gayfish says, okay, but just remember there was another succubus who claimed to be overthrowing hell, but ended up just benefiting demons in general. True. Make sanctuary great again. to more crime that's the reality of here's a link to the murders per year in new york city he's just lying do we have a live fact check murders in new york city 1950 to 2020 this is from the criminal justice uh organization city of new york 
There were 462 recorded murders in 2020, up from just up from 319 in 2019. The last similar year was 20, 2009 with 471. While problematic, these statistics come nowhere near the levels of violence faced by the city in the 1980s and 1990s. So it isn't even the biggest increase year over year. It isn't, you can actually see it here, look. Between 1989, wait, here? We've got between 1991 and 1992, there was a significantly larger and steeper increase than between 19, between 2019 and 2020. He's just full of shit. We have 700, 676 likes now? Based! Thank you all very much. You all rock. And may the power of hell keep fueling this signal. Twenty twenty levels are comparable to two thousand three and twenty eleven. So yeah, he's just full of shit. As usual, these guys are full of shit. How crime works. Um, Poverty leads to crime. This I is, would imagine this is that. Me, why do you think uh, twenty five people got shoved in front of trains last year? I don't know, dude. Well, I, that's a legitimate question. You're saying that uh, you're saying <laughs> poverty and desperation results. <laughs> what an excellent response! I don't fucking know. There's, that's 25 different incidents that I would have to look into. In crime, I'm wondering why it is that you've had these uh, uh, these homeless guys, they've been predominantly, I think it's almost entirely these homeless guys, shoving people in front of trains. Last year it was 25. And so that that is... So a, that's a mental health problem. I mean, we have a, we do have a mental health problem in this country. We have an issue okay. with not having socialized health care where people are unable to access health care, mental health care in particular, but also every other kind of health care. I mean, 28 million uninsured people in this country. That's a massive problem. I mean, what, do you, yeah, what, what is your stance on Medicare for all and health care? I'm, I'm for universal health care. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think we'd have to have some kind of like basic coverage for a universal, uh, universal standard, meaning like... Notice that he literally did the thing that Emma accused him of, bringing up things out of context. 25 people got shoved in front of, in front of trains last year. Okay, were they all for the same reasons? Was it one guy pushing 25 people? Was it the serial killer? Was it the knife alien? In this case, the subway pusher alien? What, what, we have no, he never provides any context for 25 different people murdered. He just invokes them out of context. Literally, just straight up d did exactly what she, what a masterful play to demonstrate him doing the literal thing she accused him of. If you're having an episode, this is particularly where we bring you when we help you. If you're sure. uh, broken bones, flu, Things that it's like relatively simple and knowledge based. The, the challenge with it is that we got limited space, we got limited doctors, but you know, I don't think we can function as a society if we have people just dying in the streets like we do with drug abuse and, you know. Well, then we should, you should promote housing first policies on your program. Like in Houston, <clears throat> what they did, there was a pilot program under Obama, it was a HUD grant, and they reduced homelessness by 63% over 10 years because they guaranteed housing. Do you think that the 25 examples that you cite last year, and there's like over 2 million subway riders a day, so mm. you cherry picking that, I feel like is... It's not cherry picking, it's... We're, we're, you asked, or you mentioned that desperation leads to crime. Yeah. So I'm wondering why it is specifically that we saw this increase. Is, is, is it like someone's desperate, Was it an increase? but why murder somebody? You know what I mean? Was it well, an increase? How many, we, he, again, he provided no context whatsoever. He didn't give us the years prior. What if, what if there were, what if there were 27 people pushed in front of trains in the year prior? How many people you think got pushed in front of trains in the uh, heyday of the, uh, of the mob running New York City, huh? How many people you think, hey, uh, push you in front of a train? You pissed off the dawn. Well, I mean, they're experiencing a mental health episode. They, we do not have adequate health care in this country, mental health care. I hear a lot of talk often after ma mass shootings that men 25 people were pushed, only two actually died. One of them was an accident because of an altercation over someone's phone getting knocked out of their hand. There's a little, there's a drop of context. How many times have we heard Tim Poole bring up the subway murders? And it turns out to only two people actually died and the rest weren't even murders. 
just complete lack of context. He's just completely proven Emma as 100% correct here. Mental health is the most important thing in this country. Mm -hmm. Then we should have socialized health care so everyone can have access. Talk to about a hoax. By his own definition, he is committing a hoax right now. By his own definition, twisting the stories for political ends, to make a political statement, manipulating the statistics, hoax. Tim Pool, by his own definition, is perpetrating a hoax right now. Um, and that would, that paired with a housing first policy where cities don't become urban centers for just bridge and tunnelers who want to come in and see a show or for restaurant associations where places where people can actually live and there's guaranteed housing for people. If we were able to do that, we would be able to drastically reduce the crime that you guys are talking about. Here. So when you're talking about poverty leading to crime, like what is that based on? Because after prohibition was repealed All of human history. during the Great Depression, crime fell during the Great Recession. People with your line of thinking thought we would see a crime spike nationwide. It didn't happen. You can actually look at the crime wave if you wanted to pull it up. That didn't occur. And that was the largest recession in the history of this country since the Great Depression. So what we've seen throughout American history is poverty not leading to crime. What we actually see is the opposite, that crime drives areas into poverty. We look at store closures across the country due to the fact that we have shoplifting. That leads to decaying in the neighborhoods. When people That's abandon the neighborhoods and you see this blight, that has a psychological impact on people and that drives people to commit these crimes. I mean, you're working backwards from the- No, you're actually working backwards. Wait, 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 but no, no. Poverty, clearly, this is a very simple concept, leads to something like shoplifting. Why would someone shoplift based on a personal pathology? They're shoplifting because they're desperate. Not necessarily. Like, so oh we have a lot God. of lax shoplifting laws. Whoopsies. Whoops, he didn't think that one through very well. He didn't think what that's typical of actual justice warrior, AKA Sean Fitzgerald. He doesn't think anything through very well. He's a very intellectually lazy individual. In California, for example. So they're and doing what they find is we have a lot of organized retail theft because there's no consequences for it. That's profit. For, for I mean, instance, not... there, people are trying to make money well, so, and so... they're desperate. And we have, we have untold levels of income inequality in this country. Well, since is it the income late inequality or poverty? Since the late 70s, 900%. That's the increase in CEO pay versus 12% yeah. for the working class in this country. That's you don't bad. think that that leads to levels of desperation? I so wait, wait, is look. income inequality the cause or is poverty the cause? Because those are two different things. I, I mean, they go hand in hand. They really don't. Yes, they do. Because all not the wealth all. is going towards the CEOs and to the billionaires in this country. But it's not and a zero sum economy. Down. But, what, 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 I, what, I what but, but also, if income inequality is the driver of crime, then how come Again, we... Moron. Actual moron here. You have to understand actual justice warriors, uh, 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 entire audience is people uh, who are frothing at the mouth to have a justification to be as racist as possible with the thinnest veneer of statistics. We've seen his audience before. We've engaged with him. We know the types of arguments that he uses. His entire brand is just pretending he's not racist while saying basically the most racist things that you can imagine. We saw a giant crime decline after the mid 90s when income inequality was going up. In fact, we saw this happen all the way to 2019. Can you repeat that? We had a giant crime decline from around 1995, 1996 nationwide from uh, all the way to 2019 while income inequality was rising during that period of time. Right. So why would that occur if income inequality is... Because not all crimes are the same. A, a general decrease in crime doesn't always 100%. And also, there are breakpoints if... Income inequality increases, but not to the degree where people are forced to steal things. Then they won't steal things. But if it increases further to the point where they can no longer afford anything, then they might have to steal it. It's fairly obvious. Again, unless you're an insane person who thinks that every crime is perpetrated by some crazy person who just loves to steal. If you have a child's view of the world where every single criminal uh, who commits a crime is wearing a black and white striped, uh, you know, outfit and sneaks around like this and has a little, uh, a little, uh, you know, black strip around their eyes and goes, hee 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 hee, I can't wait to steal your cheeseburger. You know, if you believe that, that type of thing or, or you know that they carry those little bombs with the, with the comically long fuse.
You know, if you think that's what every you know criminal is, then you end up in a position like actual justice warrior. If you're a smart person who has a working and functioning brain, you acknowledge that people commit crimes because they have because it benefits them in some way because they can't get, make money elsewise. It's not easy to do a crime. It's not easy. Uh, 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 it's dangerous and puts you at risk of imprisonment. People take these risks when they have no other option. We already know this and it's really funny because they'll acknowledge it on other issues when it's convenient to them. But not when they're not when they want to try and make a point about how all criminals are are genetically uh, predisposed or whatever racist bullshit they want to fucking cart out and imply. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Artemy. All criminals paint their faces and say, hey, you, when you aggro them, and then they try to stab you to steal your lunch money. They want your, uh, they want your, uh, your, your, uh, your, uh, uh, immunity pills. Driving crime. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure you're the expert, but I do know that you are saying that there was an increase in crime in 2021 and 2022, well, and it doesn't matter now that it's going back this. down to 2023 levels. This is just New um, York I can't City. See this. Yeah. I just pulled up New York City. Look at that. Right. Exactly. So in the at at in at the start of 1990, crime was at its highest and it dropped rather massively. Yes. Into uh, just this before 2000, wait, 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 where it wait, wait, wait. continued. Murders, not crime. Murders. This is murders only. Into decline, and then from 2019 into 2020, we see a huge a huge increase. That's pre-pandemic. Right. So there's a couple interesting things to point out there. No, to We're, be clear, that's not that's not pre-pandemic. That's the year over year increase. So right. it would be in the year 2020, to be clear. So 2019 would be no, the no, low no, no. number. The so, the increase actually the the draw is before 2020 meaning that could that could be 2018 to 19 then if that's the point you're making. No, you no, no, it's, that's uh, not how a graph works. Actually, I I can't believe it, but actual justice warrior is correct here. I can't believe I'm saying that. He's actually correct here. I've, I've seen these numbers. I'm telling you, you're reading this chart wrong because in New York City, it, do they have the raw number of homicides on the side? If you track this, it, this, you have around yeah, this is just, murders, this is too, just murders right here. Right. Guys, you have about 300 and then it jumps to about 469. Oh, yeah. I mean, crime dropped everywhere throughout the country since lead gasoline was outlawed. There w is oh, yeah. a massive connection, lead paint, lead gasoline predominantly affecting poor and lower income people. Um, which probably did contribute to some of the increase in volatility in that. Well, kind that, of that, that I, agree, I completely agree. I read that report. It was fascinating that when we started taking lead out of the atmosphere, yeah. crime started to drop. But that would also arg make the argument that it's not poverty driving crime. It was like chemical imbalance or something. Right. I, it's both. It's yeah. absolutely both. Well, I think it would. Yeah, I think it would play a role. Like the lead would play a role because it was in. Oh, oh gasoline she so it's it. in right. the air, air yeah so it's impacting and we know everyone it's, it depresses a uh, uh, brain function and things like that true yeah. but i think public policy has a huge impact as well because again right. we... exactly of course as fought Knight points out lead paint was being predominantly used in poor housing yes of course we saw a dramatic I mean, crime it was used because it was cheaper yes but they're never going to get into that they're just looking to wiggle their way out of this situation this crime wave started in the 1960s right and this is when we started embracing this idea that poverty was the root cause of crime, that this was more the realm of the social workers, all things that sound really familiar to today. And from 1960 all the way to 1979, the incarceration rate, even though in raw numbers it was rising, was dropping per capita. So we saw this crime increase and you would, what you would end up getting in 1979 for murder on average was something like five years. For rape, it was something like 3.4 years. And obviously, like this created a problem because we just weren't prosecuting people. This is why we ended up going with a mass incarceration solution, which, by the way, did work. And all these other policies <laughs> to get tough on crime. You laugh, but you're definitely no. I wrong. mean, mass incarceration. We incarcerate more people than any other country. We have the highest rate of violent crime for any modern Western country. I mean, that that defeats your argument. Are you fucking stupid? If we have the highest incarceration rate, and yet we also have the highest violent crime, maybe, just maybe, the incarceration might be contributing to endless cycles of violence? Are you fucking crazy?
I, I, I don't have that statistic in front of me, but we still, ma so how does that connect to the mass incarceration point? If it worked, then what does the violent crime rate have to do with it? You just want to warehouse more people? No, I didn't say, uh, for, uh, when I say it worked, we had an ex we started expanding the prison population seriously in the 1980s to the 1990s. If you go to the Brennan Center for Criminal Justice, which is a left-wing organization, they say post the year 2000, mass incarceration lost its effectiveness. But most of the mass incarceration was pre the year 2000. So obviously it had some impact and it Ooh. ranges. Low estimates are about 6% on the crime rate, which is very low, but the high estimates are about 30%. And the reason it worked is because the philosophy behind mass incarceration is pretty simple. What you're trying to do is incapacitate criminals because the same criminals are often reoffending. You brought up shoplifting earlier. You can actually pull up an article to find out that the same 300 people in New York City represent a third of the shoplifting arrests total for a single year. Probably because this they're is because incredibly they're repeat impoverished offenders. and they need to find a way to actually sustain their livelihoods in this country. That, we don't I mean, have that's, a, that, that, but that's that's pl that's put a very good way. Uh, that's, that's, yeah. that's that's phrased very well to maintain their livelihoods. Well, so, no, I mean, I, th no, their life is a better way to maintain Sure, it. sure, but like, I, I guess my point is, some of them certainly are done. Ravio Lupe, thank you so much for the $2 super chat, likewise. But when yeah. you see videos of a guy like shoveling stuff into a garbage bag, that's not desperation. But again, this is what you do, Tim. You return to anecdotal examples We're when I'm trying people. to talk about- We're talking about just the 300 people. I, 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 and I am talking about- Which is the anecdotal uh, evidence. What, what 300? No, your anecdotal evidence was you saying you saw a video of a guy putting garbage bags in there, of, of shit in there. That's the anecdotal example. Are you an idiot? He actually is. People. He said the yeah, same 300 people are the ones committing the crime. I said, right, third these, of the shoplifting these arrests These specific in individuals are doing it for profit. Okay, so we should have a system of mass incarceration because there are 300. I didn't say that. Because I, I'm talking to you now. There are 300 repeat offenders. No, no, we should incapacitate re repeat offenders so they stop offending. Got so it. If so you're this is arrested, all about the fact that your baby formula and diapers are some of the most shoplifted items alongside razors. You'll notice that if you go to a uh, if you go to most uh, uh, grocery stores, uh, department stores in major cities, they'll put cages around all of the razors because people shoplift razors. You want to know why people shoplift razors? Because they need to fucking shave. They need to shave so they can live, so they can look somewhat presentable, so that they don't have, you know, scrungly hair, so they maybe can have a shot at getting a job or keeping their job. Milk, another common item. Diapers, baby formula. We're not in favor of bail reform because we, in, in New York State, which is now currently being rolled back. Emma has these motherfuckers on the ropes. In, uh, we decided that we weren't going to require cash bail for nonviolent felonies and for misdemeanors. And you think that that's a good policy? To not require cash bail? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I mean, think, or, that, I think, or that, that that we're rolling it back. I think I think, I think look, if if you're concerned about people not being able to get out of jail because of their financial means, then I can understand reducing or even eliminating the cash bail system. Because I understand if you don't have a lot of money, even though you really only have to throw down 10% for bail in most cases, unless it's a, uh, you know. Only 10%. Man, I, I hope this motherfucker, I hope this motherfucker has to come to terms someday with the system that he's built. It would be amazing. It would be amazing for this guy to have to deal with the reality of mass incarceration. But to be fair, you know, he lives in his little YouTube room in his comfort and has his fake YouTube play button. So I doubt he'll ever have to confront that. But it certainly would be amazing for people like this to actually have to confront the systems they advocate for. Like a set figure for the bond, then I get that argument. But what you need, and the state of New York desperately needs this, is some kind of threat assessment. Like you should be able to hold somebody if they present themselves as a danger or repeat offender, regardless of bail, without bail, so that they don't continue to reoffend. Okay, but do you know what happens when people are held in Rikers, for example, as in a pre-detention center? How many deaths have happened there before they're even committed of a, or convicted of a crime? Look, there, again, that's an issue for how the jailing system works in New York City, and I am in favor of building out the jail capacity because you're talking about cash bail, though. That is exactly uh, that is exactly yes. the point that we're discussing here. Yeah. Right. So you're in favor of people being held before they're convicted of a crime. Yes. In Rikers. 
if they if they show a propensity to reoffend, a hundred percent. What is a propensity to reoffend? Um, a history like being arrested over and over again, prior convictions. Yes. So you think that they should be held in a prison that has been? It's a jail, but yes. Uh, yeah, or jail. Excuse me, a jail that has been proven to be one of the worst conditions in the country. Well, it doesn't have to be Suicides, specifically Rikers dozens Island. Dozens of deaths just this year, even if they haven't been committed of a crime. Convicted of convicted a crime. Convicted of a crime. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. But the I think that you ever a cop, bro. This guy, you're te you think this guy was a cop? I'm sorry. Look, I don't have high opinions of cops, or the physio or the or the physiological condition of cops. But I'm just gonna tell you, this guy, this guy, I don't know if this guy can pass the like fitness uh, test of like a donut shop, let alone a fucking police force. Just saying. That's very anti-constitutional and anti-democratic. How is it anti-constitutional? Um, the Fourth Amendment. It violates the Fourth Amendment. Protects you from illegal search and seizures. Well, I mean, you are the, the right to a speedy fifth? trial. People are held. I do I'm think, sorry, Fifth Amendment. Yes, I do think we should I, have I, I, reform I, yeah, on the joke. on the speedy trial side. But the idea that it's unconstitutional to hold somebody pre-trial is ridiculous. Our law is based on English common Six. law. Six, damn. Uh, six, yeah, there. We're all bad. Our law is yeah. based on English common law, and the reason we have jails is that you would actually be held in a dungeon awaiting trial. So it's like built into the system. Bail is like a courtesy. It's actually a progressive reform in response to that, where you lay down some kind of capital in place of yourself. How so much the idea money do you want to spend on jails in New York City? As much as it takes. So just warehousing people before they're convicted of anything. Well, it, again, it's not warehousing everybody, but if you have a propensity not, to reoffend, this I, is not a fucking good. This is not a fucking good look for these guys. They do not look good here. This guy sounds like mad cope, and the fact that he basically keeps having to basically say yes, you should just warehouse anybody, even if they haven't been convicted of a crime yet, insane. I think judges should be able to have judgment. It's kind of in the name and assess these people and hold them. So you just want to give it to the judgment of the judges, and it doesn't- Yes, I would like the judges to have judgment, yes. Okay, but there should be guardrails in place to prevent judges from, I mean, judges are human beings. They can be unjust as well. I don't really put them well, on you the could, pedestal you could, ob you Obviously, I'm not in favor of like a million dollar bond for somebody who's arrested for shoplifting, even if they're arrested 27 times. So yeah, you can have guardrails from the legislature, but- they can't assess dangerousness right now in the state of New York. They assess it in ways, the reason we put this law into place, which is now being rolled back, that were deemed inherently racist. They How deem so? that th th it was uh, dis- These 300 people committed minor shoplifting. They were charged 6,000 times, but we have literally zero data on the conviction rate of those said shoplifting crimes. These people need to be locked up because reasons. Yeah, Danny proportionally black and brown people who are okay but how's writers. that racist though because at their discretion it was put into it was implemented in a racist way it's but the if you same look way at the crime statistics they're well there you go so that, so so you're so this oh is God, what the we reality got the, we got to the 1350 he's doing it he always does this this is ajw's entire thing he literally has nothing else he makes nothing else his entire content is just finding ways to weasel around and say 1350 we always get back to it every single time every time we have covered ajw it's always ended up being about this he always makes it about that he's obsessed with it it's insane this for you is you believe that black and hispanic people inherently are committing when did i say inherently crimes. i mean th this if is you pull up like nypd crime data for instance since you brought up stop and frisk you can look at the shootings like the shooting suspects in any given year and if you find me a year where 92 percent or greater is not black or hispanic in terms of the shooting suspects then, then I mean, I would be shocked because I've looked at it oh, for the, the past suspects. twenty years. So yes, yeah, suspects. The cops. Holy fuck! Did he just thirteen ninety two? Holy fucking shit! Based on suspects, insane discretion. So no, you... no, it's you get a report, right? And you get a description of the suspect, and they are ninety two percent every single year or above black or Hispanic. Can I can I tell you guys a very famous New York story? There was a black cop and uh, he went to Central Park and started giving out tickets to white couples having picnics and drinking wine. And he said public alcohol consumption is a crime in the city. And he started giving these uppity yuppies tickets. Right. He got in serious trouble. The reason he did it was because the cops would go into the black neighborhoods and give people drinking 40s on their stoops tickets.
And he said, how can, the, how can these people at their own homes on their own porches get a ticket for drinking booze? Then when I go into Central Park and say, we're going to apply the same standard, I get in trouble for it. So New York's got serious problems. Even, even uh, Bloomberg, like that guy's awful. He made a, he made a bunch of like, I, I'm, I'm but, not going to say but that. The reason, I just want to cut you off because you mentioned Bloomberg and I want to respond to what you said. Under Bloomberg, 90% of the stop and frisks that were done were, by the way, they didn't find anything. But 90% targeted black and brown people. Yeah, it was people. insanely racist. So stop and frisk is fucking insane. They targeted black people and they found nothing. They just were terrorizing black people. It was a occupation, a functional occupation, using the police to terrorize mostly young black people and they didn't find anything. They got fucking nothing from it. It didn't do anything. It was just terrorism. Just so terrorism. It's, you're taking, so the, the you're highest taking number, the, no, by no, the way, no, no, is 86%, no, no. Taking, not 90%, but go ahead. You're taking the ahead. data. You're taking the data. Oh, oops. He got his own stats wrong. Fucking idiot. Data. And using what the cops did, where they over police in certain areas, and then pretending like there's an overrepresentation inherently, criminally, in those current kinds of populations. And it's it's okay. a racist argument. So you're wrong in a bunch of different ways. So let me just like run through them. So first and foremost, the highest year was 86%. And that was the year with- the Wait, that was you being wrong, you fucking idiot. That was you being wrong. You, that, oh, you were wrong in a bunch of ways. Here's a way I was wrong. Fucking idiot. The dramatic increase in stops. And if you ask me if I'm in favor of just expanding stop and frisk, which is different from Giuliani's stop question and frisk, although, you know, you might not be interested in that specific difference to the levels that Bloomberg did. I would say it's unnecessary. It aggravates people. It creates a whole bunch of problems. That being said, they're not over targeted because, again, there is no year during the entire tenure of Bloomberg where the shooting suspects were any less than 92 percent. So what the NYPD does, because it's the Wait, most data driven so police force was in he the talking about a different statistic entire world is they map crime through a system called Comstat. When there's a lot of shootings in a specific area, they send the police to those areas. The stops, questions, and frisks all relate to- That is racial targeting. You are saying that because suspects, suspects, mind you, not convictions, because suspects, uh, the cops say they're of this race, you believe in terrorizing all of the people in neighborhoods that are predominantly of that race. That is- racial targeting that is racial profiling that is targeting innocent people for suspects insane insane he, this guy looks terrible to where the he said this exact shit years ago in his Vosh debate i told you this guy's a broken record this is all he does it's his obsession he goes over it and repeats the same propagandistic talking points over and over again because he's fucking racist in my opinion that's my opinion okay that's my read okay maybe that'll hurt his feelings but i think he's a fucking racist personally shootings are and it just so happens to be those areas are black or hispanic right but and but, by the but do you get accosted on the street by cops regularly in new york City? I, it happened to me when i was younger yes but like not okay now. but do you understand but, but how to your point about hit rate how... because you brought it up Hit rate was not the goal of stop, question, and frisk. Like, this is one of the things where you're yeah. like, oh, well, yeah, this... Yeah, the goal was to terrorize black people. That was the goal. The goal was to do was to, was to pass a do-nothing law while terrorizing black people based on racist assumptions. To suppress black neighborhoods. It was a racist policy. Program didn't work because my standard that I look for arbitrarily shows that it was ineffective. That's like saying a plane doesn't work because it's not a good submarine. No, it's like, not that doesn't arbitrary. make any sense. 90% of the stop and frisk came up with nothing. True, but the point was to so deter say, the say carrying of doing, firearms. Say, have you by punishing innocent people, deter the carrying of, pun of firearms by punishing innocent people. That's like being like, yeah, uh, we we flew jets over we flew jets over this Iraqi suburb suburb uh, because we wanted to discourage people from having a good night's sleep so that they wouldn't be able to be fight terroristly tomorrow. It's literally just admitting to the racism. Well, you have legal drugs but, in your life? Uh, maybe I just I, just I have I have I could have been stopped and frisked and I could have gone to prison or I could have been held if I had a little bit less money in Rikers indefinitely until my trial came because a cop just decided hey i'm gonna stop and frisk you but they wouldn't do that to me because i'm a white woman all right that's nice well, but me, anyway it's just... about shooting well, no, that's nice you fucking idiot what do you what do you what, what, what do you mean that's nice you fucking 
a weak mugged piece of shit. You, I wanna, you, I wanna, and the point of the program, no, and this is stated games. quite literally to deter people from carrying illegal firearms. And, and, and absolutely and I'm gonna, not. And I'm gonna, it 100 percent is. Gonna, are you in favor of gun control? Uh, mm. <laughs> oh, this I'm, okay. I'm, okay. I'm a New Yorker, so, we, so I'm not it, like we, a big gun no, guy. No, 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 but let me. This we've is my point. we got to target guns. I'm gonna. And that's why. Yeah, you definitely got to target guns. I'm gonna agree with Emma, but Emma's not gonna agree with me. The idea that the police can decide to arbitrarily stop people because they might be carrying a firearm violates the second and fourth amendments. Well, again, stop and frisk is completely unconstitutional. Well, that's why fourth amendment was in my mind. I was well, again, it's, 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 you're supposed to stop question and frisk and usually yeah. no. it's based on reasonable suspicion and they're supposed that, what, to- I'm bearing arms they're supposed the constitution? To, they're supposed to follow the Terry standard. I, they, they, they this idea that because a particular group of people may be carrying guns. We're going to go start stopping a whole bunch of them. I'm like, the Constitution protects our right to keep and bear arms in the first place. So now you're violating, you're using the sec, you're you're ignoring the Second Amendment and using that as as uh, and and by ignoring it, now you're violating the Fourth Amendment. I mean, this is it's absolutely well. This, this is why I'm actually critical of Bloomberg expansion of the program because the way it used to work is that if you I'm had gonna, a I'm shooting, I'm going to take a rare moment and give a little bit of credit to Tim here. For the first time in a long time, Tim Pool actually pushing back on his far right guest. Doesn't happen often. Good to see. Small point to Tim Pool here. Small point. Suspect, you would have a description, you'd send cops to the area and they would stop people with that description, ask them questions, and if there was reasonable suspicion, they would conduct a search. This is why under Giuliani, the maximum amount of stops in a year in you know, New York City of 8.5 million people was 90,000 people. And under Bloomberg, it was something <clears throat> like 700,000, maybe 800,000 people. So he he uh, dramatically expanded the program to the point where I do think it was constitutionally violative. So you are kind of to the right of Donald Trump on this, who has been releasing nonviolent offenders. Per, or yeah, oh no, Donald president. Trump's first step act is absolutely terrible. It sets up a bunch of incentives. Well, the, I mean, that, you're that further right than I'd imagine a ton of this audience is. I that, mean, that, that's that's, fine. that's, that's like I'm not here that's to. Extremist. I'm not here to win over the audience. Well, I will win over the audience because I'm correct. But no, audience yeah, is mostly moderate. Uh, well, yeah, but Donald I, uh, Donald Trump's first that. step act had a lot of language about going soft on youthful offenders, and that's one of the reason why a huge portion of the increase in homicide that we're seeing is among young men and specifically among young black men in this country. I, I want to uh, bring your guys' attention to this uh, chart because there's a lot that it shows. I know it's just murders, right? but we're talking about, you mentioned something about the 60s. For some reason in 1962 to 64, we start seeing it, it, from 1962 onward, a ridiculous spike in the uh, murder rate offenses per 100,000 population. I don't know exactly why, we can see around 1990, okay. it starts to decline rapidly. There's a couple of interesting points there. Uh, okay. This is U.S. murder rate. So New yep. York City's broken window policing has nothing to do with it. This is the entirety of the country. Mm -hmm. This could be one of two things. We uh, when, when the Tim Pool coming in with the save now so that it isn't revealed just how racist AJW is. The, the leaded gasoline, that was the what, 80s, right? We I got, believe so, yeah. We were getting rid of and it. And the mm -hmm. last truck, I think for trucks, it was the 90s. But this also coincides with one of the, if not the largest economic expansion, or I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that now because who knows how, how you define it with, with the pandemic and all that stuff. But we had a, a massive uh, uh, economic boom in the 90s. So this would interestingly correlate with the idea that as people started to get more things, like they started to, their lives started to improve, crime, murder rates started to drop dramatically. Yeah, and, and I would Amorphous Blob says, not to boil it down to brass tacks, but wouldn't the country make more profit if we had more productive citizens than incarcerating them? Only, only if you uh, consider uh, 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 pro pr as a part of profit, uh, like the flourishing of the future of, of, a, of a country. Because no, actually creating a class of people who can be legally used for slavery is actually a great way uh, to offset uh, costs of certain uh, uh, public requirements. If you create a class of people who can be legally enslaved, by the way, that is the case for prisoners. Prisoners can be legally enslaved, which is incredibly fucked up, and they are. Um, yeah, uh, it turns out that that actually helps take care of a bunch of other things, 
uh, uh, helps take care of a bunch of other things, which makes a whole lot of cash profit. Now, uh, you could argue that it's horrible for human flourishing, that it's a disgusting crime against humanity, that it is a stain that will forever live on in the history of, uh, of the human race. You can argue that it deletes entire generations of mostly uh, people of color who are over-targeted for uh, criminal uh, enforcement. Um, but those things don't matter to people who only think about numbers and who only think about the cash in their pocket. Say that there was that was a temporary kind of sugar high based on neoliberal policies of Reagan and uh, uh, Clinton, where there was a lot of money that was um, released back into the public because of massive tax cuts. I mean, we can talk about confiscatory taxation if you'd like and the top marginal tax rate. You know, the top marginal tax rate in 1961. It's funny that you brought up that 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 figure. 1960. It's 91 percent compared to 37 percent so now. Um, but it like, it went down. It, in the 60s Re or? Reagan cut a bunch of taxes during that time period, and a lot of people got an well, influx in cash. Crime and then did drop. It, <laughs> sorry, crime did drop. <laughs> well, right, but that was temporary. That was temporary, right. and then the income inequality kind of set in, and the rich got richer, and the poor got poorer, and that's mostly right. interest. What I'm I, interested in talking about on my program. Let me uh, uh, show you guys something, which will add some context to the current crime spike. So you see right here this uh, drop off after uh, about. Remember that for profit prisons literally are literally money laundering for slave labor. We pay them with tax dollars to fill cells and force them to work for literal pennies. Yup. Looks like about 2007, there's a major drop off in murder and then it spikes in 2014. The problem with a chart like this is that it doesn't account for technology. The reason the murder rate declined in 2007 was cell phones. So. When cell phones became ubiquitous, that. the ability to call emergency services became instantaneous. So when people were victims of violent crime, you had emergency service notified immediately. And so this oh. resulted in a drop in the murder rate, but not in a drop a drop in violent crimes. Not a direct correlation, meaning crime had been oh, going down, but die. the murder rate dropped more than violent crime in general because people weren't dying. They were being stabbed, they were being robbed, they were being shot, and they were living. That's not mm. murder, so it wasn't counted as murder. Well, we we have it. We there is a chart, by the way, that you can look at because that actually pairs recessions with this murder chart. And again, the correlation is not really there. And as far as New York, you say that it had nothing to do with broken windows policing. This that, is actually no, no, that map specifically was the U.S. So yeah, no, no, I know, but that's policing. you said it had nothing to do with broken windows policing. But that assumes that there isn't a greater decrease in crime in New York than nationwide, which is not the case there was a greater decrease in the city of new york like chicago had a decline too but chicago's homicide rate which is almost on par with the city of new york is six times higher per capita than the city of new york and in terms of raw numbers it's double even though they're at a third of the population which is the same thing that i just oh. said with different math so just, new york I, became the safest big city and our crime rate the, there a th wait okay sorry actually declined something. and in fact freakonomics actually attributes this to the legalization of abortion which happened in the city of new york pre um roe versus wade it was one of the six states that had it legal electively so this is like a known thing that people have talked about and speculated on what the result is now also for the environmental wait, can point, i just ask that, you a question about wait, that so he doesn't that undermine his argument if there's others if there are other factors besides pro broken windows policing then doesn't that undermine his argument that broken windows policing was good or was he I, I, what was he I, I'm, I'm i'm getting lost here in his argument i'm sorry sure. what does the connection to a, what does crime that's what freakonomics says that the legalization of abortion and they compare it to um uh, Ceausescu, whatever country he was the dictator of they say that that correlates with crime because they say all these unwanted children end up being born and then they end up committing well, that crime. is certainly a claim so that's how that works together then you're saying that abortion should be illegal uh for that reason no 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 it would be legal abortion leads to less unwanted children being born and again okay, i'm glad i'm not the only one getting confused here that emma is also getting confused because this guy is babbling at, and i do not understand what he's trying to say you're so smiling, you but I, I, I made, well, I'm actually pro-choice, but uh, okay. not for this reason, but you're smiling. But the thing is, this is what was proposed in Freakonomics. I actually disagree with their analysis. They leave a lot of things out. But so again, saying, my, I use that as an example to show a, that the New York decline did start before the national you're, you're decline. Just, I'm, just I'm to almost positive that that study has been called into question. It is. It is. Just, just to clarify, you're yeah. saying more abortions meant lower crime. Is that what you're That's saying? That's what Freakonomics asserted. It's in their little movie mm -hmm. and it's in their original book. I think that makes sense. If you've got, uh, 
if you've got two parents, if you've got one parent, they got a baby, that baby's getting food. You know, like you, you, you could have no job. You could be homeless. Someone's going to find. That, well, that you know what I would love to, to decrease desperation in terms of uh, families in this country. I'm not sure if you've talked about it a ton on your program, Tim, but uh, we should have made the child tax credit permanent that we expanded in the 2021 American Rescue Act. We uh, can you explain we, what that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was a, a tax credit that you, that was in place. But during the pandemic, it was expanded to be a monthly payment. It also the uh, amount was increased, so it was up to thirty six hundred a month for six and under, three thousand for six to seventeen, and then uh, it, it also was expanded to include people who had, who had too little income to qualify previously. We cut child poverty by nearly in half instantly, and I the reason that we don't have it is because the entire Republican Party and Joe Manchin and Cinema essentially nixed it. But yeah. this is the kind of stuff that's possible in this country to make people less desperate. If you want less crime, make society a broader, uh, more beneficial place for people with a true, bigger safety true. net She's so right. people don't have to turn to death. Well, also, she sounds really good here because she's putting forward a, a tangible and actionable thing instead of uh, Sean just going, hmm, yeah, well, what's the, you ever notice how the crime statistics, 92% uh, are black? <laughs> This little fucking gremlin, racist gremlin over in the corner. Meanwhile, Emma's actually putting forward her foot forward into like an actual policy that isn't just like nodding at racism for the fucking creepy groipers in the audience to go, yay, yay, racism. I know, real, real quick, this is the crazy thing. So I, I, I think the only people who disagree with that are establishment Republicans, like the prominent Republican sure. party members. I, but I, you, I, you should talk about it more on we your do. show. I mean, I, I think that what after uh, I'll, I'll go he extreme didn't even with know it. What it was until just now he didn't talk about that come on dude it's okay for you to say you don't talk about it on your show it's okay to just own up to that if a, if a peep if after your second kid no more taxes income tax zero have two kids no taxes i mean i i know that None. there have been certain proposals um in places like hungary that yep. are like that but they are heavily heavily tilted towards heterosexual families as opposed to if yeah, a gay obviously. couple wants to adopt or have children. I would if I, I'm I'm I, I don't agree with that because I want more taxation, frankly, so that we could have socialized health care. We could have a college for all act, which honestly you could pay for with a tax on Wall Street speculation. It would be incredibly easy. It's only forty eight billion a year, which is less than the military budget increase that we did in twenty one to twenty two, which was around seventy one billion dollars. Um, I, I want to do that kind of. Unironically, though, a a like college for all plan uh, that allows people to just choose to go to college and not have to pay for it would would be a huge investment in the future of the country. And any like weird nationalist type who doesn't get behind something like that, uh, you really have to question their motivations for why they wouldn't support something like that. Something that was so clearly would be advantageous to the entire country in a time when it's more important than ever to have advanced education. As, uh, as as more and more tech jobs are created, as more and more uh, specialized jobs, as there's a higher demand for scientists of all strikes, of all stripes, but no, you don't hear that very often, do you? Often, so getting rid of income tax, that wouldn't, I would not be in favor of it. No, for families. But if, if, if you want to create tax incentives for families so that they can raise their kids and yeah. they aren't in poverty, I am all for that, Tim. The, but the, to, the to your point about nobody would disagree, I would 100% disagree with that because again- You don't want tax there, credits for people that have babies? Yeah. There is not a demonstration that these policies kind of, that these work in reducing crime. In fact, we see well, the opposite. If you put up that homicide chart, it starts but, increasing during the war on poverty, which is the greatest but, 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 increase in crime. Uh, sorry, go ahead. It, 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 not talking about crime. In, well, in she, relation, she was. She said, "If you wanted to deal with crime, this is how." Well, you I'm do trying it. to connect it to this, but like, right, right. But, but in but the broader I, sense, I, I think. think the most important thing to take away from this here is that every single Republican voted against the American Rescue Act and the expanded child tax credit. There is one party that is oh, okay. look. Maybe it's not good enough. Saying, I'm, I'm, I'm more obviously in the Bernie Sanders wing. I am, but real, real have quick. deep, deep disagreements with Hillary Clinton esque um, neoliberal politicians. Right, but, but, real, but, real, real, but, if, but yeah, it's the if, Democratic saying, Party in favor of policies that are going to be helping there, people there, on a day to day basis like this. The Republicans voted against a broad bill that included one thing in it. Is that what happened? Yeah, but they also fought tooth and nail about the actual child tax credit. 
This was a part yeah, of the Inflation Reduction Act negotiations as well. They were not in favor of that, too. And Joe Manchin, your senator, right? We're here in West oh, he's Virginia. Awful. We hate him. I mean, <laughs> you got to like, I mean, you're you're a he's celebrity out. here, right, Tim, in West Virginia. You should call on Joe Manchin and say, hey, why don't you do this? Why are you not in that, favor that, of a child tax credit? That dude is neoliberal. Totally. To perfection. It's like. That nobody in the in West Virginia wants the guy. Right. I mean, and he's for, very unpopular. For, for, right. That, right. That's not true. He's actually the most popular politician in West Virginia history. Go talk to some people just, in West Virginia. I'm sure you could find people. He's find old, people, dude. I, I get I'm here. Old numbers listen. are in the tank. Right I'm, now. I'm in right wing nut job territory. Listen, and this guy lost his mind. I get why maybe, you're against him. Maybe because... four years ago he was popular because the state, uh, like for, for whatever reason. But people are not happy with him today. Tim I've not right met about a this. single person here who likes him. I mean, they might be upset with him now, but he No, he's has tanking been... in polling numbers in hypothetical I mean, matchups with you've Jim got... Justice in the Senate. That's actually a fact. West Virginia, 86% Trump supporting state. Yeah. They all of those people despise him for obvious. I'm 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 here. I'm here for for Emma and Tim telling AJW to shut the fuck up. I, I can't believe I'm actually here for it. I doubt it's going to last very long, but I'm here for it, okay? I'm here for it. They're actually having a more interesting conversation. Actual Justice Warrior is literally just there to be the racist goblin. It's me, the racist goblin. I'm here to drop 1350 or even better, 1392. <laughs> and they're like, please shut the fuck up, racist goblin. This reasons. But then you go and meet some of the more moderate, don't really care, middle of the road people, and they're just like, what happened to that guy? And, and I'm the racist goblin. Have you seen my fake YouTube play button? They gave it to me for being so racist. And by that, I mean, I gave it to me for being so racist. Good job, me. T look, man, I, can, I see what you're saying, but I, I'm telling you, like... No, I get why you're I, against him. Because it's, not, it's, not, it's not about me. I'm saying, like... We'll go hang out in any one of these, and this is the panhandle, don't get, me, don't get me wrong, but I'm even, we were hanging out in Charleston uh, five hours from here. Not a single person I've ever met in West Virginia is like, I like that guy. Not one. I've talked to people who are like, who, who have told me in West Virginia that they don't like Trump, they would rather have DeSantis, and then they say, man. See, Clippers, when I do the racist goblin, that's the time for you to do the clips and to put it in the clip channel, okay? That's one thing. Real quick, hold on. We have to take a moment. We have a lot of viewers right now. We have 450 viewers right now. The Clippers in chat, I call upon you. You guys saw the cool Demon Mama trailer, didn't you? That's only possible if people clip funny moments so that we can actually put them into trailers. You know, my editors do a lot of work, but we can't catch them all. If you guys see me doing something funny, you've got to fucking press the clip button and put it over in the Discord in the clip channel. You understand? That's how it goes. I, You know what? I should have had faith in you. I should have had faith that Uncle Gumbald would have the racist goblin. It's me, the racist goblin. I'm here to drop 1350 or even better, 1392. <laughs> it's me, the racist goblin. You gotta get I'm the part to <laughs> two. We have to train. Uncle Gumbald, we have to train the chat to be better clippers. You want to know? I know that I'm being a little bit uh, egotistical here, okay? But that's my... I'm a streamer. Let me be a little bit egotistical, okay? Vosh, he's got excellent clippers, okay? The Vosh clippers are crazy. Now, some of them are a little crazy in the wrong direction and, and, and go into the trying to make him look bad, but he's got some damn good clippers. We need to build a clip culture here. How do I, how do I do it? How do I build the clip culture? You guys know I have banger clips. There's so many of them. Years of content with killer clips. You know how hard it was for me to find the Alex Jones mama segments? It took me forever. I had to climb through my memory to remember all the times that I've done an Alex Jones impersonation over the years. Nobody could remember. It was, yeah, it's true. It is true. Twitch has a much better clipping tools. Yeah, it's true. Cl Twitch clipping tools is, is way better. Plus, you want to know what's cool? On Twitch, I can search clips that have been made of my channel. On YouTube, I can't. It's kind of difficult, but I need to get, we need to restart the Demon Mama clip industry. It would be such a banger if I got clips up 
and all that stuff. We got it. We got to We got to rebuild it. Anyway, let's continue. That was just me being egotistical and wanting my. You know why? Hold on. I'm gonna rant a little longer. I lied. You want to know why? Because clips help immortalize what happens on streams. Part of the reason that it feels like it just disappears is because the stream just goes into the archive. And some of you remember it, but it's hard for me to remember the most fire moments, the moments that made people laugh. It, it makes them feel more immortal. It makes me feel good. Clippers make me feel good, okay? I'm serious. Yeah, we gotta figure out how to make the site be able to clip things. Hmm, maybe there's a way to fix that. Anyway, let's continue, let's continue. Just gotta go, he's gotta go. We gotta get somebody else, he's awful. Because he's like- Have you seen some of the Vosh out of context compilations? Yes, I have, they're amazing. That's why I said the Vosh clippers are amazing. We, I have so many funny moments. And if we got those, our community would be so much bigger. We would grow like crazy and you would make me feel good. That's just me uh, convincing you all to become clippers, okay? He's, he's not a Democrat or a Republican at this point. It's like he's a corporate, he's a, he's, that, that, that's it. It's like he's of the corporate party. He, well, he doesn't seem to be he, catering he has, to anybody. He has a fine line True to walk, in my opinion, cow. to hold a state. True theory, cow. We absolutely need to create a Demon Mama meme culture. You know, we had it for a while. For a, There was a good period of time where there were tons of Demon Mama memes coming out. Anyway, let's keep going like this as a Democrat and this like I get I get why she being more progressive doesn't like him, but he's like one of the only Democrats that could have won here, which is why when they tried running a progressive in the primary like that person got slaughtered by him. Man, right. mansions, so, it's, but it's, I get why you would want to replace Jim, him. Jim, I want to replace him. The Republicans he, lost the Senate. Jim Justice he was is very likely. Yes. Yeah. He, sorry. Yeah. I just want to point this out. I, I, off the top of my head, I think Manchin's numbers are like 55% disapproval right I don't, now. I can't see him winning. I mean, yeah. look, I don't know for sure. I'm not psychic, but everyone I talk to, it's like you've got, um, I think it's, uh, who is it? Mooney, potentially, and um, Jim True, Justice. Rose. But Jim Justice seems True. very likely to get it. We'll right. see. I don't know for sure. Well, you brought up you brought up Trump and DeSantis in West Virginia. I'm curious because uh, I saw Tim. You know, you've been like upset a little bit about how DeSantis has been, or maybe not upset. A little bit. Okay. No, 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 no. Oh, you're pissed. <laughs> oh, All right. Yeah. So, so, so I'll I'll characterize this. You're a little pissed at how DeSantis has been using those AI images of Trump. Uh, Trump used hugging. three of them one time. Yeah. What? You know? What? I mean, can you expand on that? That thought. Ron DeSantis, his team in order to smear Donald Trump, ran fake images of him kissing and hugging Fauci alongside real images and then wrote real life Trump over the top. Right. And it's one thing- That's actually insane. That's actually an insane thing for them to do. To play politics, which I despise. When you get someone being like, you know, uh, Nancy Pelosi voted against this act. It's like the Saving Puppies Act, but it's actually a bill that like cuts taxes for oil companies or the inverse where it's like, you know, uh, insert Republican voted for whatever i i despise all of that but mm -hmm. actually fabricating images shrinking them down and placing them alongside real images and then writing real life trump on it can you pull up the image so i can see it yeah. yeah so i mean is that kind of the core of your are the, are you would you say as of now if you were to vote today you'd be voting for trump yeah um but th that's the core of your disagreement oh. so oh there's a lot more than that here take a look at this this is this is as I, I, I feel like this is campaign ending. I feel like this. <laughs> really? Yes. I mean, it's funny the, to me. The it's, manufacturer. It's silly. I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be campaign ending, but it's definitely an absolutely insane thing to do. Talk about a way to. Is DeSantis an anti AI accelerationist? Because let me tell you. If you wanted to be, if you wanted AI to get le le legislated in real time, the best way to do it is to pull off something like this. The absolute best way to make sure that AI laws get passed is to do something this crazy. That's an insane thing. That's an ins insane level of just blatant misinformation. Literally using doctored images. Of <laughs> fake images to trick people into voting for someone is, look, this is the open door. Ron DeSantis decided to be the person to stick his foot over the line and say, we will manufacture fake images to win. I mean, they do say that they're fake. Like, I'm no, 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 They this. don't say it's fake. No, it says right there, fake. This is an image calling out oh, okay. the fake graphics. They wrote real life Trump, and this is NPR circling the fake images to call them out. Right. 
they ran Look, okay so far in this conversation uh tim pool tim pool and emma vigland have had their whole conversation and you can go back and forth as to who you think won between emma vigland and tim pool obviously i lean towards emma vigland for a number of reasons uh, I think she just presented a better case. But one thing we can be absolutely sure of is AJW has absolutely lost. A charisma black hole who sounds like a fucking idiot and Tim Pool keeps having to correct him as he's too stupid to fucking look at, at what's actually on the screen and understand what's being said. With one exception. One exception, which was when Tim Pool was misreading that graph. That as real life Trump. Now, I understand if you if you scrutinize the images, you can tell they're fake. This one says Mahehap. Wems. Okay, yeah, that's not that's not English, mm -hmm. and it's under the White House emblem. But when it's in a, in a in a video that's a minute long, and you pass this, I've already had people tell me that they they didn't realize it was fake, right. and I've already people say I talked to my parents about it; they thought it was real. And so Jesus what the, the DeSantis uh, uh, fans are doing now is they're like, "Can you believe Tim actually thought those were real?" <laughs> like, dude, if you want to play that game and call me stupid and insult me for calling out DeSantis's campaign for doing this, I literally don't care. It changes nothing of my moral stance that this stepped well over the line. Now, I got to be honest, I, I, you go back in time to the first time a politician lied and people were probably like, can you believe you actually lied to us? And we know that's bad and I hate all of it. But this is the next level. This is like, yeah. Holy, well, it, it's well, what are, bad enough they're right. all lying. Well, well all what's right. the core of your disagreement otherwise then? I mean, I because uh, if, if, oh, if, if, it's, if it's with COVID, I would say I'm more on Trump's side with that kind of stuff. I liked Operation Warp Speed. Look, I would have done a little differently for giving I away agree, gov yeah. for giving away government money for vaccines <laughs> that we should have nationalized them and the well, intellectual property should have been waived so that everybody could have had access to it also in the publicly South. funded should be publicly owned. I, I'm in favor of that, Tim. The, so, I mean, that's one thing that I think Trump is better. And, and look, just DeSantis is frankly, an anti-LGBTQ demagogue. Um, and that's where I would, I, I think Trump's less dangerous than is. DeSantis. Okay. Like he, he is, but I think it's more so the Florida legislature that's doing it. And then he's nah, latching onto dude. it. Because I think when it comes to real nah, issues related dude, to stuff, he's, he's mum. When, I mean, when, when, he's been, uh, anti-wokeness is the center of his campaign. Yeah, he oh, Trump, made that at the forefront of his campaign. No, no, for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, I, mean, I Trump, like to say this in a lot of ways. Send the National Guard against. He the, backed off of that one pretty quick. Black Lives Matter rioters. That's that's a different question. That's that's not wokeness. That's like crime and, and law and stuff. DeSantis, I think, is mostly surface level. I I like a lot of his policies. I think he's. What he, do you like about his policies? Uh, I mean, at the beginning of COVID, good it wasn't good particularly question. good, right? He did a lot. He did a lot of what everyone else did. But to be fair, I was I was very much like I guess. I was very much, uh, you know, Thomas Massey didn't want to do this big spending bill. And I said, this is this is crazy. The economy, like, we don't know what's going on. There are people dying. We're seeing videos of people dying in the street. And so I think hindsight being 2020, I look back and I'm like, I probably should not have just gone along with all of that. That was probably stupid. Uh, Ron DeSantis did initially, but then changed and said, you know what? This is not making sense. We're reopening. And I think that made a lot more sense. It, it was I, also under extreme pressure. Like Andrew Cuomo was sure. the most promoted governor in the country, and he was the most attacked. So DeSantis did did well in to, in uh, not the first, but he did well in uh, reopening things back up. But what policies then, do you like generally about him? I mean, the, besides the COVID stuff, what are again, the again? Good question. He really kind of dodged the question there. Other policies, like as governor. I mean, I, I think I, you think it's just the state legislature that's putting I, together yes. these anti. Uh, I, I, I mean, I look, think it's mostly Tim, them. You and, said and that there was a grooming it. event happening at Club Q, uh, uh -huh. and that was after the shooting, right? right? Which is essentially kind of saying, well, look, they had it coming a little bit. I mean, no. you, you didn't say that, but that's the I implication. Actually, said, actually, he pretty much did. He said the violence is going to keep happening until the grooming stops. He basically did. Yeah, he he did. He said it without saying it. That's what was the core of his argument was. Yeah actually the violence is going to keep happening if you keep grooming kids even though no kids were groomed at club q there was no child grooming that occurred there at all so we prevent these things from happening if people so i tweeted so you actually seem pretty aligned with desantis on the absolutely on the right anti but i but i don't think it's him i think it's the florida legislature and if desantis becomes president you think congress is going to vote for any of these things as for the club q thing uh I said, if people keep saying wood chippers, what did you think was going to happen, right? I am saying, stop said. saying these things. Saying what?
people keep going online and going wood chippers, wood chippers, wood chippers. You know what that means, right? For who though? That's that's not that's not what he said. That is not what he fucking said. We've covered this on here. Hold on, I can do this in real time. Hold on, we're gonna bring up that Tim Pool. Hold on. I can find this tweet. Give me just a second. Hold on. Let's just let's just do a quick fact check on Tim Pool. He was not talking about wood chippers, wood chippers, wood chippers. We shouldn't tolerate pedophiles grooming kids. Club Q had a grooming event. How do we prevent the violence and stop the grooming? He's just lying. By the way, this right here is the benefit of doing reacts to these types of live conversations because this type of fact check cannot happen. Uh, obviously, Emma Viglin did great and held her own, but this is the reason why I take time to do reacts right here. This is the actual tweet that he tweeted. We shouldn't tolerate pedophiles grooming kids. Club Q had a grooming event. How do we prevent the violence and stop the grooming? Just remember that. He's just lying. He's trying to say that he was denouncing wood chipper memes, literally completely changing what he actually said, lying about what he said and making it sound like he was against violence. When in reality, he was doing apologia in the wake of a mass shooting, the literal day after a mass shooting. What a fucking piece of shit. All Tim's points have been stripped away. I, go I give him no points anymore. Dimitri Graham, thank you so much for joining as a Chunky Imp. Happy to have you as a YouTube member and a Chunky Imp. Thank you so much. What a fucking for liar. For groomers. Right, okay. And I'm like, what do you think is going to happen if you go online and keep calling for death? Like, don't yeah. do that. Stop that, right? We Listen want to, to stop lying. child abuse. We want to stop violence. That's what we want. So that's why happen. I hope you have dedicated so much of your program to talking about the Catholic Church. Because there is, that is the institution in this country right now that is most associated with child abuse. Hands and down. queer people, yeah. gay people, trans people, that is not a thing. What is your definition of I mean, child they're abuse? Most, they're most associated, so, but they're actually not more abusive than any other religious institution. So do we, and they're not do we nearly have, as abusive but as no, 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 the I wanna, public I want to stay on this. And I also just... What, where, do, where, where's, where's, where, where are the books at? Where do they get moved to? Tim, though, what policies about DeSantis do you like in terms of his, what he's running on for president? Culture war stuff mostly, but I think I think COVID hey, policy was plug good. for the show. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Roll right, but what's the culture war stuff that you like? So yes, but the reason why. Damn, he's trying so hard to avoid answering this question. Holy shit! I've not been so. Last year, I was like, I think DeSantis is probably better for one simple reason. Uh, no, what stuff do you like now? What do you like that he's running on? Yeah, culture war stuff predominantly. But but, but can you expand on that notion? I think you, you want me to like pull up specific. I mean, I don't know. It's like you, you said fired, that you said that the, you uh, like certain things that you're leaning more towards Trump because of AI images. I would hope that there's a little bit more substance to your disagreement. Well, but every time I try and bring it up, you you, you, you just ask me the same question again. Because you're not answering my question. So I'm trying to. OK, go ahead. So uh, now where was I before you, you jumped back in? First, the culture war stuff is obvious, right? Parental rights and education bill. Yes, we, that, that one's fairly obvious. I don't know about the Disney stuff. That's kind of uh, absurd. What I was going to say is, let's go back in time to why I said I was for Ron DeSantis in the first place and why where I'm at now is not. The first thing was last year, I was having a conversation with the Daily Wire crew and I said, Trump is brash. Many people don't like him and uh, he won't shut up about 2020. He's a sore loser. Ron DeSantis, at the very least, is dry and can get us something better than, say, Joe Biden. I know, but I'm still not really hearing Today. a specific policy. Right. So his you COVID policy was correct. Okay. Okay, that's not. Wait, but you these, just these said are, something are, with the beaches that yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, the that closure. One. You can bring it over. Like pre his presidential platform. Like, I what don't know are if the he's things? Got one. Does he? Okay, so you're. That, I, I've not been on his. On, I've not been on board with him. So we can look at what. And you said parental rights. I'm curious what you mean by that. Yeah, like um, I'm in favor of parental rights. Hey, eh? right. Like I want parents to be able to, if their child is transitioning, to be able to work with their doctor with a plan. Yeah and yeah. make sure that children are not being driven to suicidal ideation and that parents aren't restricted by the state from- Let's talk, let's talk uh, about one of his policies. From, from, okay, go ahead. I don't want parents to be restricted from the state right. from giving healthcare to their children. If I open this book yeah. on YouTube, the stream will get taken down. Okay. Did you ever read this book? No. 
This book is in middle schools in Florida. Ron DeSantis had it removed. That's one simple policy he did. That's very good. What? Why? There's all kind. Wait, there's a. Po I have a poster in the back of of. I have all. I have art all over the place that will get this channel taken down. You can get things taken down for all kinds of things. There's there's there's. If you show a a a a historical artistic photograph of naked people, you can get your stream taken down. That doesn't mean that it's appropriate to take a book out. I don't know what this book is. I don't know what's even in this book. Uh, what is he even talking about? You've never seen this book? I've heard about it. Have you ever looked inside of it? No, but I mean, I, I don't believe in censorship. If so I show you I a picture of a blowjob, would you be offended? Um, I mean... <laughs> Can I show you a picture of a blowjob I, I wouldn't be offended. I mean, I no. think... Disavow. That, honestly, do you know, Tim, that the more children learn about sexual education in the way that's productive and done in schools, the less likely they are to be sexually abused because they know what is good and what I is bad? I can't show this image on YouTube. I, do you okay, hear me though so about what? that? So Wait, who cares? You, there's there's images that are in in puberty education books that you can't show on YouTube. That doesn't mean anything. This is he's this is a manipulative tactic. Whatever. Who cares? Let's keep going. Oh, I think the more children I think the learn issue is, about sexual education, the less likely they are to be victims of pedophilia and rape. I think that the issue is you're confusing sexual education with kink, right? So I I'm I'm, I'm looking at this right what? now. I can't even hold it up because. I can't point it at the camera. And uh, I don't understand why school children should be taught how to perform blowjobs for an auto androphile. I don't believe they're being taught that. The why was this book was book banned? In, why was this I, I book don't, I don't really know. Again, Amazon because this is right, another case-by-case right, so, case example. No, no, no. You asked me I am about not what in Ron favor DeSantis of censorship. Did. You asked me what Ron DeSantis did that I liked. That he Here's banned genderqueer? That he's, he's removing pornographic and kink books from middle schools is a very, very is that, good is one. Is that a kink book? Is that what that is? This book was in one high school in Florida, but he's saying middle school. Sam Cedar did a fact check on this. So this was a book in a high school. In a fucking high school. And it clearly, I don't know anything about this book, but it, but for all we know, it could have just been an educational book. They had books about fucking sexual health in my high school. That's not fucking anything dangerous. High school kids need to be able to research things and better to learn it from a book than from fucking watching Pornhub or some shit. You fucking crazy? And I, I, I would, I would. Uh, well, for me, my politics are a little broader than that, Tim, I gotta say. You, so, listen, if your argument to me is that I or anyone else should support your politics because you want to show blowjobs to children, you're going to lose. Well, I don't think that that is a policy done by teachers in this country. I think this that this book is a. was in schools in Florida, there which are is a ton why. Of Let's see, according to the correction, one school, one high school. Fortnite says, I've actually read this book. It doesn't even show the blowjob itself. It's just described because they wanted to convey that it made the main character dysphoric. That's how they found out that they were non-binary. Wow, how scandalous. Books that are in a ton of schools. I don't, <laughs> I don't believe in censorship. That's not my bag, buddy. So you think children should have Playboy? I don't really think so. No, because that's pornography. Uh, I, I mean, okay. So you, so no, no, you no. think Tim, a blowjob? you're job. in favor of censorship. Uh, I, yes, you are, you absolutely. Are. Oh, that's good to know. If you watched the show, you'd know this. Oh, you're, okay, you're we pro talk censorship. About I, am, we're I am not, in, I, right. one, I want children to be able to have all the information that they need in order to Including make, pornography. No, that's not pornography. We, we, were, we back up record everything. And uh, we're, we'll still be recording. I think, all, I think, I think we're back. We are back. Whoa. Oh, it's okay. Pretty, it's pretty now, stormy out. It broke your soul. It's stormy too. Yeah, I mean yeah, it's, it's, it's rainy. rainy yeah. Okay, I think we're live again. Okay. Well, there we go. We're back. <laughs> yes. So the power, the power just, just fluctuated. went out. Yeah. That was have, God striking you down. That was Tim. the YouTube striking me down. You're the one arguing for. Uh, You're the one arguing you for censorship. Yes. I've, yeah. I've, I mean, I don't. I don't really mind that stuff. I mean, do you, are you in favor of, vi of children seeing violence on television? No. That scares me a little bit more. Uh, it depends, depends. It's not so simple to say violence, right? Um, but mm. yes, censorship is a yeah, good thing, but when done bad, is a bad thing. Yeah. Uh, for instance, uh, Ian Crossland, who is a co-host on TimCast IRL, used to be a moderator for Minds.com, and he had to filter out graphic depictions of murder and, and, and rape and child abuse. Censorship is absolutely vital 
in, in that in that regard. So if we're talking about a book like, uh, in particular, there was one called, uh, there's a teacher who provided a book to her middle schoolers called This Book is Gay. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I have heard. That's provides, actually a very good book. And it provides instruction on children. for chil She provided instruction to children on how to use adult gay anonymous sex apps. Yeah, I don't think that's appropriate. Now, look, by all means, you can be in favor. Let me tell you she you're had not a child. Maybe, maybe she had a child in her classroom. Who, who wanted I, to go on Grinder and have sex with adults? Is that your argument? No, I mean I'm not saying that. I, first of all, I don't know. Again, this is why would another, a ten year old need Grinder? This is this this is the thing that you wait, do. Th th wait, wait, hold on. Teaching a child about thank you. Teaching a child about things that exist in the world is not telling them to go do that thing. That's like saying like if you had a book that told children that a thing such as pornography exists that they're telling them to go make pornography. That's insane. That's an insane leap to make. I don't know what this book is. He's talking about an award-winning memoir that was in high schools. Yeah. Just again, this is that sort of out of context shit. What he's trying to do right now is he's desperately trying to make Emma look really bad. This is like a weird pedo jacketing thing. He's trying to make, he's trying to get Emma with a gotcha that he, so that he can say that Emma's like in support of grooming or in support of pedophilia. And that's fucking insane. And all he's doing is throwing out random books and saying, oh, you're, you approve of sending children to the gay concentration camp? Wow, wow, it's fucking pathetic. It's embarrassing and it looks bad. It doesn't look good to anyone but a frothing Nazi. Any normal person watching this makes him, it makes him sound like a crazy person. Oh, oh, that You're I do. picking specific examples that you are asked no, 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 you asked for a specific You example. asked me for one. Okay, then go ahead. I, the, I, I did. I we have the book. Asked. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I not said, don't show children blowjobs. You said you I'm, appreciate I'm it. not in favor of censorship. As, I'm a, not in as favor an of objective observer that's sitting here, you asked for a specific example. He gave it to you, and then you try to say he's broadly in favor of censorship. Wait, no, no, no. He, she asked for a, as an explicit example of Ron DeSantis's policies, to be fair, but whatever. Censorship. Yeah. It's possibly to make a hypocrisy point later on when he complains oh, about yeah, social exactly. media as censorship. Oh, yeah, exactly. As Chariot says, wait until he Tim finds out that the main characters fuck in a scene in George Orwell. Oh, dude, you guys want to remember? Uh, anybody here fucking uh, read... Uh, uh, oh, my God. Why am I blanking on it? Um... Atlas Huxley, Brave New World. Anybody read Brave New World and the crazy, the, the literal orgy scene that was in that book? I read Brave New World in high school. It has, an, it has multiple orgy scenes. Should, that, should Brave New World be banned out of all high schools because it contains adult content? Oh, don't, oh God, should we ban it? It has legitimately problematic shit in it. It has a child, a child gang bang in it, and it is in every library in the country and every high school library in the country. Or something like that. No, but I it's just... like he's talking about this specific issue. And I remember I was working on an education series about this kind of thing years before it was popular. Yes, I was ahead of my time. And yeah, these kind of things were popping up all over schools. And I am happy that DeSantis is like doing something. We about had it. Asra Nomani on the show. She brought in, I think, like 70 books of all of the weird racist indoctrination and sex stuff that they're bringing in schools. Yeah. And I said, look, man, it's really simple for me. If Someone comes to me and says that they think this book, which Amazon says is 18 up only, should be given to children. I'll say, I will vote against you. So if, if, should the if, Bible be banned from schools because it depicts sexual acts? It is banned acts? from schools, public schools. The Bible no, is probably not. is not appropriate for children. No, it is not. The Bible is not banned from public schools, you fucking idiot. Are you, are you stupid? The Bible is not banned from public schools. You can't teach the Bible like as a class in a public school. It's not banned from public schools. What a fucking idiot. For a lot of reasons. And I am not a Christian, so I par don't particularly care about whether or not they're going to give a book to children that has something like Deuteronomy 2320 in it. I don't think kids should be reading that kind of stuff. Okay. However, I'm, I'm in favor of the parents deciding when it is appropriate for their kids, which comes with very difficult moral questions in that my morality is different from the morality of each individual parent. So that's why I'm kind of like, the government probably shouldn't be the one doing it. Have you had a an expert on sexual education on your program to talk about this kind of stuff? Yes. Um, what did they say? Uh, and are you in favor very, of very abstinence only? No. 
it's been a, it's been a very very long well, time. You're not in favor of abstinence only education. I, I think abstinence only is. So silly. you're you're kind of hinging on this book that has pornographic material in it. That like you, okay. Uh, There's a difference they, between sex and kink. Right? Uh, okay, sure. So the the many many individuals on the left have made arguments in favor of kink for kids, which is weird to me, and I think it's inappropriate. Is that what they said? I think is kids that what they should said learn kink for kids, but also um, learning about the existence of kink is not the same thing as telling like uh, is, is like participating a child in it. I think that it's perfectly fine to discuss the existence of kink in a sexual educational setting. I think that that's sucks. I think fine. the parents should decide when it's appropriate. This is why typically at schools, they would give out a notice to the parents like, we're intending on doing sex ed here. Yeah. Oh yeah, by the way, hold on. I can speak to this real quick. I can give you guys, you guys, many of you will know, many of my viewers will know, I grew up in an extreme Christian cult. Uh, I was taken out of sex ed as a kid um, because my parents wrote a letter to the school saying that they didn't approve. And you know, want to know what happened? They just, the, the school just said, okay, and then they had me sit in a desk outside of the room while everybody learned about sex ed. And I sat out on a uh, uh, on a desk and just read whatever I wanted. It was actually rather embarrassing. And I wish my parents hadn't done it. And then my parents had me listen to a focus on the family's puberty segment, uh, uh, which was on cassette actually, which is really weird because that's kind of an anachronism even at the time, but that's what it was available on. It was on cassette. Um, we listened to Focus on the Family, where uh, I learned that masturbation is a sin um, and learned an abstinence-only approach that was mostly Christian indoctrination and almost no actual sexual education. It was amazing. And by amazing, I mean terrible. Yeah. The subjects were in a cover. Nothing's changed The issue that way. with Florida was that they had a policy where they would not instruct parents and actually were told not to talk to the parents if the kids were suffering uh, identity issues. Now that's, the state should not intervene and take away the rights of the parents in that, in, in the, in that way. Can you, can you say that again? Right, but that's not the, taking this... the rights away. That's just saying don't immediately run to the parents. It's just saying ha like a child can talk to the, the counselor and it's not the school's job to immediately inform the parents because that can be very risky. As we know, there are a lot of very abusive situations that queer and trans and gay kids find themselves in. It's completely reasonable for a school to take precautions given the statistics that we know on that. They, uh, what about gender identity issues? So in Florida, the, what, what, what prompts a bill like this, and it also happened with stuff in like Nashville, was that the schools, and I think they do this in like Washington and Colorado, the schools were actually telling teachers not to talk to the parents if the children were having some kind of identity issue. And so this led to suicides. No, and, no. What leads well, to suicides it, it is that children are did, wait, being what, told what that they cannot. Led, what do you mean uh, it led to suicides? Citation needed, bro. Massive citation needed. Uh, operate and be who they are as the gender that is who they are in their heart. That's what's leading to suicides. But I'm, I'm, I'm talking about one specific. I'm, I'm, well, I think it's like. Again, two, you're two talking things. about one specific example. I'm talking you, about you, you, broader. You can't ask broader, me for like. I talk about politics, Tim. I don't talk about anecdotes. Well, he's talking about policy that they would not. You, you asked me what gender. policy was. I'm talking about school district policy. I'm talking. Okay. I cover national you asked politics. Me too. Yeah. All right. You <laughs> can't ask me a question that when I when I explain where the policy came from, be like, no, no that makes no sense. No, because you 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 go into you individual anecdotes. anecdotes. I'm telling you, you why the policy was written. Okay, go ahead, Tim. That's why the policy was written because there were children who were having identity issues and the schools were instructed, the teachers were told not to tell the parents. This led to, I think it was a suicide attempt. Him, you can actually see him getting red here. He's starting to get red. He's getting really pissed off. And honestly, I don't think it's justified. She's squeezing him a little bit, but he looked like an idiot because she asked for a policy and he kept avoiding it. And then when she finally asked for a policy, he's only, she's correct in saying he's only gone on about anecdotes. The parents got Who angry. Who had a suicide attempt? A little girl tried to kill herself. Okay, again, and, this is one case. Go and, ahead. And there was also another, in, right. I'm not talking about, look at this anecdote. Let's set policy. I'm saying Florida set a law because, okay? I'm not saying I agree or disagree. I'm saying a thing led to a thing, right? Mm-hmm. My position is that parents should be fully informed about what's going on with their children and teachers should not withhold that information from them. It is not up to the state to decide what is best for the kid. There are certain exceptions. But the exceptions. state is deciding what is best for the kid in these instances. They when, are essentially saying that children, 
it, it, take Florida, for example. You're talking about Florida. Let's talk mm. about it. They're saying that children cannot, under the uh, supervision of their doctor and with their parental consent, this, none of this happens, by the way, without parental consent. It's but, illegal. They, 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 can, they cannot work with their doctor on a health care plan for them to transition into their I'm not gender. talking about that. I mean, you're, you're talking about medical intervention. I'm talking about Right, but about, you like, have spoken about this on your program about before. Yeah, I think like if a doctor prescribed a lobotomy to a kid, the government should stop it's that It's not too. a lobotomy. That's I not didn't say, what I'm it saying, is. I'm saying that there are certain things in the medical world that we've prohibited. Right, Dude, but this is not... Insane, but it's what an insane but, thing to jump to. Yeah, well, you know, if a, if a, if a doctor prescribed a gun to a kid, a, a shot in the head, yeah, what if a doctor prescribed murdering the kid? Would you agree with it you're an idiot what a fucking unserious piece of shit the american you, you journal... disagree you think it shouldn't be no I'm not arguing I, every own. single expert that is reputable on this front disagrees the american journal of pediatrics did a study about transitioning children they studied them over five years 94 percent of the children continued mm -hmm. to identify as the gender that they were choosing to identify when with placed at the on beginning five whole then, years yeah wow. yes wow. and when placed on lupron no I, I what a fucking idiot Actual justice warriors should basically just check out of this conversation completely. The racist goblin should be shoved into a box and ignored. He has nothing to add. Th then the 6% uh, that were remaining, 3.5%, identified as cisgender, 2.5% went back yes but they were heavily weighted under the age of 10 years old but this is, this is where they never had about. any medical intervention this is how actually trans care actually goes tim 8 to 13 years old you're put on puberty blockers those are entirely reversible then mm, after that, 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 sorry, that is 100 true. It's, it's just not true. That's 100 true. They're not entirely then, reversible. Then 16, to a certain degree, then, they can be. Then why are they used in instances where They're someone has use. puberty that 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 precocious that, yeah, puberty. That's precocious right, puberty. right, exactly. And there's a carve out for that in the Florida bill, by the way. So cis kids can have it, but trans kids can't. Because that's then the primary six, label. Then 16 years that's old. the primary use of the drug. Okay, but that's, that's, that's not uh, what doctors say. No, no, no. Then 16. That's literally meaningless. The stupid on label argument is a dullard's argument. Every fucking drugs are used all the time for off-label use. It, it, fucking aspirin is used constantly off-label use. This guy's a fucking idiot. A, only a dullard makes the on-label argument. Nearly every single drug that's prescribed is prescribed for an off-label use because the labeled use is whatever the drug was invented for. 16 years idiot. old, 16 Absolute years old, idiot. that's when hormones Genuine happen. Genuine idiot. Very, very, very rarely are there any surgeries under the age of 18. I don't hear you talking about rhinoplasties under the age of 18 on I've your talked, program. We, we have. Oh. Maybe, maybe you haven't heard it because you don't watch the show. Okay. I've also said child beauty pageants are wrong and they're disgusting. I've also said Hooter is inappropriate for kids. And I said we should- Yeah, of course. Viagra for erectile dysfunction started as an off-label use because Viagra was initially a blood pressure medication, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's stupid be giving chill minors any kind of cosmetic surgery. I don't even like tattoos or piercings. So when it comes it's to- It's quite puritanical of you, Tim. I'm surprised. You have a lot yes, of swords I don't and think children, and stuff in uh, I, I don't think children should make, uh, uh, should be altering their bodies. But you uh, just said parental rights. So if under uh -huh. 18, parents have to give consent for piercings and tattoos and Do you think a, a mom should have the right to remove the salivary glands of, like, of her child? No, no, no. Are, Are you for parental rights it? or not? See, this is this is this is a every right has limits. What well, is actually interesting? Yeah, do you think a a, a a a parent should be able to blow their kid's head off? Man, what a stupid dullard! These people are so dumb. You know what? One of the things that annoys me the most is that these people these people are constantly crying about how nobody wants to debate them. Can you blame them? Can you blame anyone for not wanting to debate? fucking idiots like this and of course it's actually true that a ton of people will debate them they're always lying about that shit but really could you blame anybody for not wanting to engage with a bunch of morons who go when you go hey if a parent signs off on a tattoo or a piercing are you really against that and then they go well if a parent wants to blow up their kid with a nuclear a nuclear bomb do you think that's okay emma he, after he spent like 20 minutes being the parents' rights guy, he spent the last fucking 20 minutes being like, I'm all about parents' rights. What a fucking moron. Because we've what you're asking, we've actually talked in a great depth about on, on Timcast IRL. That Are you the, for parental rights or not? I just that, asked. That question right there 
leads in two different directions, which is, again, we've addressed. If you watch the show, you'd have heard the, the, the statement we've made about well, it. Well, I heard you five minutes ago say you were right. parental rights, and now do you're it, saying you're not. What, where, where do p parents' rights begin and where do they end is strictly a moral question based on the moral frameworks of an individual. If there is someone who goes to a doctor in, say, uh, Saudi Arabia, and the doctor prescribes female circumcision, they're going to argue it's the parents' rights. We would argue Another against Another hypothetical. That. I'm and, talking but, about but reality. But these, these things literally do happen right. in other countries. But it wouldn't the be point, a doctor. I'm talking about this yeah. country, and I'm right. talking about and so parental I'm making rights. a point. The point is, the idea that parents have a right is limited to what we, what our moral limits are. Meaning, if you morally are okay with a child sex change, then you are going to argue in favor of parents' rights. If I say you shouldn't be able to mandate vaccinations, you'd probably argue against the parents' right, right? I, Should a school be allowed to mandate vaccines for children? Yes. But what about the parents' rights? Are you for parents' rights? Uh, well, I'm for public health. But you're, so, uh, you're not for parents' rights. You see, that question leads well, nowhere. She didn't, did she claim to be the parents' rights person? She didn't claim to be the parents' rights person. No, I mean, look, Tim, I've never been made parental rights a plank of my own politics. I'm saying this within the context of what you just said five minutes right. ago. Yeah, exactly. And I'm you, explaining. That's what yes, I'm parental so rights were, extends to my morality. So, right, your morality says that you think that trans children and parents, even if they agree with their child and the doctor is supervising this kind of transition, you're essentially saying that you don't believe that they should be have the power and ability and that the state should intervene. That sounds like big government to me. Uh, yeah, I'm um, not, I, I, I don't know if you know who I am. Well, OK, then there you go. <laughs> the, the, the state should intervene. What's that supposed to mean? What's, what's that supposed to mean? Because you, know, like, you don't believe that parents should and first, their children. Um, they're at, in at, agreement. So at first, my position was, you know, early on. You know, if the doctors are prescribing it and it's the best thing they can do, I think we're looking at in the past four years about 50,000 or so cases of cross-sex hormones for kids. You know, so be it. No. Then we started seeing like the Tavistock scandal. We saw Finland, Denmark, Sweden start Wasn't pulling this. The research coming that? out showed that it was not particularly effective. And then we also had multiple it's studies showing that uh, um, desistance rates for those who did not take any, uh, who did not receive intervention was actually upwards of 95%. 50,000, no, 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 sorry, sorry. The most, the numbers that I'm finding here is 14,000 between 2000, between 2017 and 2021, 14,000 was cross sex hormones. He just lied again. He just fucking lied again. And then my position became, it probably is the appropriate thing for the legislature to say, we're not going to allow this anymore. Okay. I just listed the American Journal of Pediatrics. That's incredibly reputable, incredibly reputable. 94% of children continued care after age. How, mm -hmm. Take a Netherlands study. This is Lancet. 98% continued hormone therapy on follow-up. After what? So, so, so you... No, but so, the other one's a five-year study. This no, no, is just a after, secondary after one. After what point? Well, no, so, so this is the issue, right? Those studies were based upon whether a child was placed on puberty blockers or not. When a child is placed on puberty blockers, they tend not to desist. When yeah. a child is left alone, they tend to desist. So the issue is then... If, uh, according to... No, 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 you're misinterpreting that. You're... No, Tim. No, you little liar. When you consider uh, uh, patients that were that got to the point of getting onto puberty blockers the desistance rate goes down because it takes a lot more to get to the point of puberty blockers so the desistance rate goes goes way down when you consider all of the patients including ones who never got to the point of doing uh uh, uh puberty blockers the desistance rate goes up because they decided not to start puberty blockers not because of, they didn't do the puberty blockers because they desisted before starting puberty blockers. Th th this is, oh God, it's so fucking annoying. I hate this. This is such a manipulation of the data. And Tim Pool does this all the time. We've called Tim Pool on this on two separate occasions on this exact topic of him completely misrepresenting what it says. If you consider all of the people who did and didn't end up going on hormone blockers, they desisted before they decided to get to the point of hormone blockers. And of course, if you then shrink the amount down to just those who start hormone blockers, the ones who get to the point of going on hormone blockers have a very low desistance rate. Because as it, com as it, comes, as it turns out, doctors are pretty good at helping these, these kids decide whether or not hormone blockers are the right choice for them. This makes this shit makes me so mad. This particular bit of misinformation completely pisses me off.
I hate it. You know, you want to know who else did this? Literally years ago, when I debated Rob Nor, this came up. This exact topic came up, and I had to explain this exact misrepresentation. It's one of the most common misrepresentations on the right. Seriously, you can actually read the person who published the study wrote an addendum to the study specifically explaining this that is in the text of the study. All current versions of the study have that addendum that explain the misinterpretation. Seriously, I'm not kidding you. We've looked at it on stream. <sighs> Whatever, let's go. Who, you know, 10 prospective follow-up studies from childhood adolescents found distance ranging from 61 to 90%, then the safety of the children would lean towards non-intervention. I, I, look, no, I, I'm, I'm, no. go, go ahead. You can, yeah. uh, again, we should probably agree to look at this, these kinds of studies before we're going to pull them up for a debate, because what I'm pulling up and what I'm referencing is in, in, inherently reputable and you can find any information no. that you want on the internet. Yep. I am with NCBI. a majority of LL. doctors on this front. There's, th is, I mean, that's this a broad this statement. Is, I don't know about that. No, no, no. That is actually a fact. That is 100% a fact. Well, I've seen this movie before. So what's happening is you're referencing detransition under a system where they wouldn't be put on puberty blockers necessarily, and then they would go through the cross-ass hormone. So everybody who would have desisted at the point of puberty... We looked again recently, like last month. Yes, I actually showed the statement... Um, on on during Tim Pool's argument with Lance from the Surfs, I brought up on screen the statement and the explanation and where the and and the the person who published the study directly addressing people misrepresenting the study and and they go into details explaining the exact way in which these studies are misrepresented rep represented and it's identical to what Tim Pool is doing here. They misrepresent it which is what you're referencing, is already excluded from her sample. So, right. like, and I don't even think you would oh, disagree right. with that, that once they're actually past the point of puberty and they still think they're in the opposite body or whatever, and they go through the process, there's a very low detransition rate. But you're specifically talking about desistance. Look, and I remember yeah, this saying, because no, no, this no, happened this when what, you argue with the serfs. This I mean, is it, what it boils down to. I'm not a moralist. I don't have like the arrogance to believe that my personal preferences for how my life would be lived should be imposed on other people. Um, I'm trying to make a argument for a case for, uh, I'm trying to make a case for a broad set of policies that are going to make sure people are as happy as they can possibly be and mm -hmm. can live their life to the fullest. So if you want to impose your morality on people, it sounds like fundamentalism. For me, I mean, I'm in favor of- a real argument. But if most- No, that, no but I am on. having a real argument. That's not an You argument. just said your morality said, is- here's a study. Oh, that man. <laughs> here's a study that shows desistance rates up to 95%. <laughs> Hold on. Desistance rates are shown up to 95% with non-intervention, so- then we would lean towards non-intervention. And you said you're a fundamentalist. No, 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 no. You didn't make an argument. No, you made you, a... earlier you talked about how your morality is what you want to dictate in terms of this policy. Wait, I, you see, this is this is what I was talking about with Sam. Okay. Uh, right? The inability to grasp philosophical concepts. When I explain to you that you are opposed to parental rights because you're in favor of vaccine mandates, right? I don't think you can understand. She didn't claim to be in support of parental rights. <laughs> Excuse me, goodness, big sneeze understand the 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 uh, duality of the, of the statement you're making are you in favor of parental rights can go in one of two moral directions you do have a moral stance i wasn't you talking about i wasn't talking about parental rights i was using that as a way to talk about right. your My statement point is, on parental rights if and you, I fully if you have a moral position on morality, public health Tim, and you want I to have... impose that then you too would be a fundamentalist and you've made a nonsensical statement why? If you want to make an argument about why me using this data is incorrect, I'm all ears. If you want to tell me I I'm a fundamentalist, I haven't seen the data, so I can't. Well, I, then I don't can't. make an argument about it if you don't know the data. No, I all do right. know the data. I use the American Journal you said of you Pediatrics. Didn't. I don't know the data that you just pulled you up. You did not look up desistance rates. You did not look up anything other than what fits your narrative. Tim, what you just said is that you want your morality to dictate policy. No, I didn't. I want people to have freedom. I to certainly do did what not. They want. I, and, that's that's just not not true. You, I said so that we, everyone's everyone's uh, view on a question like parental rights is dictated by their morality. 
One detransition study claims that an 80% desistance rate occurs in trans ki children. However, when the study was scrutinized, it was discovered that the methodology was deeply flawed. The study in question did not differentiate between the following, young people with gender dysphoria, young people who socially but did not medically transition, and young people who were simply exploring gender diversity. In fact, nearly half of the children involved in the study could not actually be located at the end of its conclusion. They were recorded as desisters by z default and thus were listed as detransitioners. The only justifiable conclusion that could be drawn from the study on the subsequent review of the data was that strong gender dysphoria was a good predictor of future medical uh, transition. This is the exact one that I was talking about. This is the Steensma, the Steensma one. This is the one that has been heavily criticized be for exactly the reason. This is ex this is the one they're talking about. Oh man, this one is fucked. This article is fucked up. If you go into this article from the Huffington Post about the end of the detrend of the desistance myth, this is this article is actually so, it gets into such fucked up stuff. Like, for example, how some of the main people pushing this shit, like Dr. Kenneth Zucker, were literal child abusers. Until t December 2015, by the way, doc Dr. Zucker was one of the big people pushing this shit. An independent investigation led to Dr. Zucker's firing and his entire clinic being closed. The investigation was uh, results were highly damning. They found that Dr. Zucker, uh, uh, they found methods being used were 30 year years out of date. The clinic assumed that all gender variant children needed to be clinically fixed i.e. they used coercive behavior modification on queer kids to make them act straight. Children were pressured into being photographed without their clothing. The clinic emphasized tests, treatment, methods with no scientific basis in evidence-based medicine. Cam age staff asked prepubescent children that were high, uh, questions that were highly sexual in nature. Former patients, parents, and therapists of former patients described this treatment as disturbing and harmful. Cam age hid affirming community and medical resources from patients. Dr. Zucker regarded being cisgender, heterosexual, and gender conforming as the best outcome, quote unquote. That's a quote from him. Dr. Zucker and his team could not conclusively demonstrate that what they were doing was not reparative therapy. And by the way, this was the clinic that they made all trans kids in Toronto go to. And this guy was a huge, he was the guy that pushed this detransitioning shit so hard. Zucker was like one of the biggest proponents of this Steensma study. Zucker was a conversion therapist who also abused a fuckload of kids beyond uh, just con uh, con conversion therapy. Anyway, sorry, we got off on a little bit of a distraction. Just so that we know how dishonest the fucking, uh, uh, the people quoting the Steensma study are. Which is what he's bringing up right now. This whole desistance thing, he's referencing the Steensma study without actually providing context for it. It's highly, highly manipulative. It's, it's disgustingly manipulative, honestly. By the way, here it is, just so we're, 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 we're quick, real quick. Hold on, I wanna be, I wanna be sure here. Yes. This is the, the, by the way, Steensma himself, Thomas D. Steensma, the person who did that study, went back and reanalyzed the study later on. This is his analysis from 2013. Conclusion, the intensity of early gender dysphoria appears to be an important predictor of persistence of gender, gender dysphoria. Clinical recommendations for the support of children with gender dysphoria may need to be developed independently for natal boys and for girls, as the presentation of boys and girls with GD is different and different factors are predictive for their persistence of GD. We found a link between the intensity of GD in childhood and the persistence of, of GD, de gender dysphoria, as well as a higher probability of persistence among natal girls. Psychological functioning and the quality of peer reasons, re relations did not predict the persistence of childhood gender dysphoria, formerly non-significant. This is exactly, this is exactly what we just read about this statement, which said that the Steensma study, the only thing that the Steensma study actually proved was that if you have really intense gender dysphoria, you are likely to end up seeking medical intervention that's the only thing that was proven because they did not distinguish between the the time scale 
uh, and the type of, of desister. People who, who, who had a, a, a moment of gender dysphoria and then ended up not seeking medical care were recorded as a detransitioner. I'm sorry, it's just, it's so, this, this issue frustrates me so much because it's used so much. I know, I know you guys probably get tired of hearing me go through this, but. Yeah. You do have one as well. People have a moral framework. You've told me that you're in favor of public health. Mm -hmm. That is a moral stance. So are you a fundamentalist? Do you no, want to oppose your moral? No, I talk about moral? politics. I don't talk about things that are so abstract. I talk about Are you about in favor of vaccine in... mandates or not? Of course. That, that's a moral position. I, not a scientific a, one. No, it's, it is a public health position. Well, uh, it's, it's sure. Your morality dictates that the government... Phoenix Wildfire with the incredibly generous $5. Thank you very, very much. I read the Finland study. The issue is with a son, sudden onset dysphoria as a kid. The prepubescent kids with dysphoria had around a 1% desistance rate. Uh, I think that's a different study, but yeah. Can impose a medication on people against their will. Thank you very much. Because I'm trying to create a society. That's a moral question. No, because I'm trying to create- That's moral. Sure, I think I am more moral. We but you just said you weren't. You said you were not a moralist. No, I'm not. I am dealing in politics and uh -huh. politics can create outcomes that are moral or immoral. And I'm dealing in the ones that I think will create the most. Uh, so you're more the best outcome. No, moralism, uh, you... moralism in the, in the way that I was referencing it is one that falls back on notions of fundamentalism and imposing morality that is individual to you I'm on not the rest talking of about society. Imposing morality. I am talking about I'm talking creating about a society data that shows creating children. a society that gives people the freedom that they moralism. No, it, that's politics. You want to bro. create a society that does a a, a a a works towards a goal of your personal perspective. I, the, uh, th what you are talking about is imposing your narrow set of ideas about how society should be or based on how the scientific things, research i pulled up no not no it's no, I literally pulled a study you no know, you want to restrict people's ability to do what they want to do with their bodies that's what you want to do do you think I don't that people should that. cut their hands off <laughs> i don't deal in a abstract ridiculous hypotheticals because i deal in reality do i you cover think, politics so, so you're in favor of female genital circum female circumcision that doesn't happen in the united states how much do you so want what to bet? how I, much do no you're wrong I, I, there, there, are, there are very like, small like, amounts i am not in so favor you're in favor of it I wouldn't. But I, you want to restrict what people do with their own children? You're against parental rights. That's Don't not play the same games. thing. That's uh, is not it, even close to the same thing. She's not arguing for a prevent parental rights position. She's saying people should have the right to make a decision with their doctor about their own body. This guy is so dense. He doesn't understand it. He's not listening, and he's just getting angry. The doctor so is a doctor. Uh, you want to talk about Dearborn, over, Michigan? No, I've no, actually no. gone there and done the research. I've I've actually <laughs> done the boots on the ground journalism in this story. Okay, yes. Oh wow. Yeah, right. Because uh, female circumcision is a bad thing. We do not want these things to be happening. And even the parents were going to doctors to get it prescribed. There are limits. He's, There's the famous story of the so Kennedy. Bad. They got the, the, what is it? The Kennedy got it lobotomized because the doctors prescribed it. Just because there's current scientific research that leans one direction. Hey, newsflash, motherfucker. People didn't volunteer for lobotomies, you fucking asshole. They were pressured into them. Lobotomies were forced onto people. Completely. Notice one involves someone actively seeking out a specific treatment. And 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 the other one involves someone being having their brain scrambled forcibly by an institution that they were imprisoned in. Fucking idiot! I hate these people so much. You guys, I mother, I fucking, I hate these motherfuckers so much. And every, honestly, if it wasn't for Emma Viglund reacting to this, I would not be react. Or if it wasn't for Emma Viglund being present here, I would not be reacting to this at all because Tim Pool is. Just the most odious motherfucker. This shit drains the shit out of me. It's the same misinformation pumped out every single week. The same manipulative misrepresentations of studies. The same lies. The same uh, completely uh, 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 asinine comparisons. It's just, God, it's so tiring. I'm so tired of this doesn't mean we, 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 we move absolutely in one direction. What we have here is a very prominent set of studies, which we've referenced on the show numerous times, showing desistance rates for minors who do not receive intervention in terms of affirmation. 
uh, or gender sex change is upwards of 95 percent, in which case science dictates we do not intervene. If you want to take the 5 percent chance that we then intervene in these children's lives and that can result in even one kid being harmed, that sounds like an immoral action. Now, these are extremely specific hypotheticals that you are maximizing this is, no, in this, this current is a study instance. I up. And I am interested in creating a society that is not not that is more yes moral but it's based on outcomes not just that's what, what i just pulled up like I, I mean i can read to you again right but pull up the american pediatrics but, study but we're talking about, about can, can i ask a hypothetical while you pull that up if if it is true that prescribing puberty blockers prevents people from hitting that point of puberty where they would decide and largely they would decide to desist right when they hit the point of puberty would you be in favor of removing that from the gender protocol because this only is talking about desistance at the point of puberty so like what he's concerned about is that if you stop people from going through puberty you stop the changes in their bodies and all that and then they can't like rationally make that choice because they haven't hit that point in their development i i i don't have the uh kind of I guess arrogance. I would say. To I mean, know I asked you. A, I, I asked you a hypothetical, about, like hypothetically. Right, but I, again, this is exactly what reactionary conservatives do. You know, it's like, a red flag if from you deal, if, arguments. If you deal, not, if you deal with hypotheticals, because th when you actually deal with the practical reality and the outcomes that you're dealing with and that you're uh, prescribing onto society, it creates an inherently unjust society. So let me you know, just, as, let the, me just, as the right wing conservative Destiny oh. said recently when he was debating the left wing pro lifer. It is a definite red flag when somebody is unwilling completely to engage with the hypothetical. If you want to say why the hypothetical doesn't apply, that is totally fine. No, because but, 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 but she has stated why the hypothetical doesn't apply. She absolutely has. She stated that that's to, trying to be like, try, when you say, well, a, 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 a child should have the right to sit down with their doctor and decide the future of their body. Um, and then you respond, well, do you think a kid should be able to sit down with their doctor and get shot in the head? That is not a serious hypothetical. There, that, that's not a comparable hypothetical. It's you goofing around and trying to look for gotchas. It's you shopping um, for stupid gotchas that don't you know, advance the conversation at all. She's been pretty clear about that, in my opinion. For you to just like reality. say, oh, it's a hypothetical. I can't okay. talk about it I as if you don't so. know what a thought because experiment is. It's kind of odd. Look, I've, I've asked you, we have here, it's I literally just pulled up detransition Wikipedia. We pulled up this study that shows that without intervention, desistance rates are from 61 to 98 percent. And here I and, have general uh, acceptance of standards of care. The overwhelming weight of medical authority supports treatment of transgender pa patients with, with GNRH uh, agonists and cross-sex hormones in appropriate circumstances. Organizations who have formally recognized this include American Academy of Pediatrics, the, American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, American Academy of Family Physicians, American College of Ob Obstetricians and Gynecologists, American College of Physicians, American Medical Association, American Pediatric Association, dozens and Remember dozens of Remember when doctors said most smoking was good for you? You're not citing you're not citing what? science. You're citing government approval. No, I'm not. No. I am citing that's the, and that's fine. Not, what does that what does the government have to do with it? These are medical organizations. Okay, sure, sure, fair point. You're citing medical. <laughs> that's a, that's a pretty major medical organizations, despite the fact that there have been numerous instances throughout history. In fact, basically all of them, where we've been like, hey, we were wrong about that. Like maybe we shouldn't drink mercury if you get syphilis. But what I'm referring to is okay. Again, do you see how he just he's just doing? He's like, oh yeah. Uh, medical organizations have been wrong, like in 1300 when they thought you should drink mercury to cure syphilis. Yeah, the medical organization that was the, the, the royal alchemists of Great Brittany, which was five wizards who got together and met in the royal court. Yeah, dude. For real, man, he's such an unserious person. Specifically is, if there is no intervention of a trans child, desistance rates are from 61 to 98%, showing the majority of kids are better off not receiving No, look, I mean, you're on- Because that includes the kids who never sought intervention. Obviously, if they desist before they seek intervention, obviously, you fucking idiot. Obviously. What, what what he's reading, if he continues, is that there is a but. Yeah, of course. But he always stops. Of course he does. They always do that. Detransition Wikipedia. I majority of convention of a trans child, desistance rates are from 61 to 98%, showing the majority of kids 
are better off not receiving No, look, I mean, you're on detransition Wikipedia. I just listed a just, list just, of dozen of, Again, of, he of mentioned half desistance, not detransition. This is like very important that we nail down what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, right. what I'm saying is if you have a trans child uh, or a child who is suffering from gender, gender identity uh, disorder or dysphoria and you do nothing, there is a 61 to 98% chance they age out of it and grow up and are happy and fine. That's made up. At it's the, literally the, right the there. Point. What, the, what oh, are you talking about? On Wikipedia. At the point That's of puberty. No, I pulled up the NIH. About. You said you can pull up anything. Yeah, so here you go. NIH.gov. Tim. Here you go. Tim. Are you, are you happy? Tim. NIH.gov. Deal with what I just said about that medical the, organizations. the level of medical organizations. You're saying I'm that they're all wrong. The, I'm that trying you... to look at the, at the exact one. I'm trying to find the exact thing that he's looking at here. You have some sort of like special knowledge that you can supersede their their expertise. No, he's not. Area. You're cherry picking what? American. And you're making the appeal to authority. Um, I just, I just, first of all, I just cited one from the Netherlands, but American Academy of Pediatrics, American appeal Academy of Child appeal and Appeal to Authority, Appeal to Authority. Keep no, doing. I mean, but, I, but, not that, got, like, but I'm not in a medical authority, and neither are then, you. Then, so then, why would you appeal to All I can do is point authority. to a study and say, "Wow, if this study is true, I'm opposed." Remember, to wait, hold on a second. Flashback, guys, real quick. Sorry, I have to flashback. Remember when, when, uh, remember when, uh, when. Um, do you, do, do you remember when Tim Pool was arguing with Lance of the Serfs and he refused to engage with any sort of meta analyses and he was getting mad because he was like, oh, well, those meta analyses are, you're, you're, I don't trust those. And now he's like hammering on one study and he was specifically talking about how he thinks it's bullshit that you can just, you can just pick any one. Now he's doing the exact opposite in this fucking conversation by just hammering one single study stupid for this what an right? idiot but there's also all these european organizations that are getting rid of this specific practice that he's focusing on which is the all these european organizations he means one country one country that has been heavily criticized for doing so and that country is finland which has been, has been fucking criticized for very good reasons because they made the decision to stop providing gender care for, to kids because of a controversial study, a study that has been well criticized by numerous medical organizations. One fucking country, idiot. Puberty blockers, and like for some reason they're not on your list. No, which is we are we are properly like assessing when intervention is appropriate here. I, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious. But why would they suspend in these better healthcare systems in Europe? Why would they suspend this specific practice that we're already? I mean, you about? listed Sweden and, and Finland. And they've just well, elected a far right them. governments, but um, I mean, but anyway, these like again, this is what I'm interested in, in talking about in terms of politics. I want to create a more equitable society for people. We should have socialized healthcare. Medicare for all. You should talk about that more on your program. You say you're in favor of it. I haven't really seen. I I I haven't Look, seen much. When you guys um, cherry pick stuff, to no, talk no, about we music talk or about whatever. We should talk about ending like, child power. I mean, it's just funny. You should talk about ending but child it, but poverty. But you could have talked about my position on universal health care any one of these times. You never do. Why? It's what? not going to get traffic for you. Well, I mean, I, you don't clip anything about universal health care. You should focus more on it, and what? then we would do, and then we would focus on it. Sirius says, I'm already aware of the study he's citing. This study is a meta-analysis that includes as part of its sample conversion therapy studies. Yes, that's the one I'm looking at right here. The one I'm looking at, which I believe is the same one he's pulling, pulling from. It's been a little bit difficult for me to... Um, it's been a little bit difficult for me to hammer down on exactly which study he's looking at. But if you take a look at this one, which I believe is the one he's talking about, the Rita Kirtu... Kal Kalitala Haino study, uh, their citations were from Kenneth Zucker's uh, clinic, which, uh, let me just see if I can find that here. Hold on. Yes, here we go. There's his main citations. Why the increase in referrals? Zucker et al. observed an increase in the number of adolescents. And by the way, just so that we remember who Zucker was and why he was heavily criticized, let's just go through the list of this is facts. His clinic was shut down for abusing children specifically to try and make them stop being trans. 
methods used were 30 years out of date. The clinic assumed that all gender va variant children needed to be clinically fixed. Children were pressured into being photographed without clothing. The clinic emphasized test treatments and methods with no scientific basis in evidence-based medicine. They asked prepubescent children uh, highly sexual questions. Uh, multiple former patients, parents, and therapists of former patients described treatment as disturbing and harmful. They hid affirming information from the patients. They regarded being cisgender, heterosexual, and gender conforming as the best outcome. They could not scientifically demonstrate conclusively what they were doing was not um, uh, 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 conversion therapy. And this is the, this is the guy whose work is being uh, is being uh, uh, cited here. By the way, just so that we're clear, just so that we understand what's being discussed. I don't know if that's the exact study, but I believe it is one of two studies done by that person, uh, both of which refer to Zucker. Just so we're just so we're clear. Because, like what we try when, to do when are we is be to like, in for no real reason, time, let's just make a universal health care. What we try to do in real time is correct right wing lies, whether it's you or lot. Dave Rubin or Steve Stephen Crowder. We do talk about abortion a lot. Yeah. We do. What's my what's my abortion position? I'm not sure. Why? You've not watched any of the 8,000 segments we've done I mean, done I, I do know that you called that 10-year-old uh, case a hoax, a political yeah, the, the, hoax. The, the, if the you political to maneuvers it. around it to change the law was a hoax. Nah, yeah, sure. that's not what you said. So Dude, let's go back. I wish we could. I wish she had that clip. I'd love to see that, but whatever. Well, how uh, do you not know my, my position on abortion? Notice that most of these types of studies use narrativizing instead of actual, uh, you know, neutral descriptions of the study procedure. Yeah, I know. I know. It's the age-old thing. <sighs> None of these people actually engage in any sort of meaningful analysis. They are looking to bolster their reputation by misrepresenting studies. The Steensma one gets misrepresented all the time. Uh, it's just fucking annoying. I mean, you watch the show. You watch at any point. You can see the arguments we have. I don't he have a ton too. of time to watch. All you your specifically show. covered his episode with the serfs, where they talked about it in depth. So it's weird that you don't. Well, know. reiterate your abortion position for me, and I'll Approach respond choice. to it. Okay. In I what think, way? I think Roe v. Wade was the right decision. Okay. I think that life should be uh, okay. federal what's should be this, mandated should be protected. What's this supposed to be? What's this supposed to be? A gotcha? I don't know. Under the Constitution at the federal level, and that there it, it probably does make sense for the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade, but that means Congress needs to codify it. Okay, but that's not going to happen, and that's because we don't have. Well, a, that's a different question. Because we need filibuster reform. So, so I, I I'm not that, really interested uh, in process. I'm interested in outcomes. As we get back to again. Um, the differences that we clearly have here. I don't really care who imposes the right to abortion in this country. I just care that we have a right to abortion in this country and we don't. Well, right. Anymore. Yeah, I think at first when Roe v. Wade was overturned, I thought that it was probably good it would go to legislation. Yeah, joy. Yep. Because the, uh, the Supreme Court arbitrarily setting law is probably dangerous. But however, since then, I've looked at it and said, it's a 14th Amendment question, the, the right to life. And, you know, looking back on that now and understanding Roe v. Wade actually was a, a, a pretty good decision. I think now at this point, you'd need some kind of codification. I don't know how the Supreme Court's going to go back on it, but that's a political conversation, not a, not a personal perspective on abortion. So my view is, is uh, pre-viability, it's individual discretion. Post-viability, it's probably going to require some kind of, um, depending on the circumstances. Where do you draw the line of viability? Can the baby survive on its own? Okay. Well, 90% of abortions happen in the first trimester, which is the first 12 weeks. 99% yeah. um, happen in the first 20 weeks. The rest that happen, the 1% that you're talking about, which is overrepresented constantly for fear-mongering purposes, is the 1% that happen when the life of the mother is in danger or there's a issue with the fetus. Well, um, there's no question. So there's no need to parse and draw arbitrary lines because what that does is it essentially, especially with rape and incest exemptions, which you speak speak about, it s makes it no, seem no, like I'm not in favor of incest exemptions. Okay, the the one that we spoke about earlier. Okay, the rape. I'm not even speaking about your specific opinion about this. I'm talking generally about the notions of abortion. You can't have rape and incest exemptions because it what? takes so long to prove the. Wait, wait. Did did he just say he's not in favor of incest exemptions? So he thinks that, like, if a dad fucks his own kid, that that child should have to be brought to term? Jesus Christ, bro. Jesus fucking Christ. Those cases, Tim that Sest. it would yep, completely nullify 
the need for an abortion because as the pregnancy is going along, you would be unable to perform the abortion in the time that it takes yeah. to prove that kind of stuff. So right. when that stuff is put into legislation, what it does is it waters down and makes to the public, it makes the public uh, uh, seem uh, like, oh, we're not so barbaric. That's why we should not be intervening in what doctors and patients are doing. I want people to be empowered over their own health care. Same thing with trans kids. So you disagree with same Roe v. thing Wade with abortion. Uh, sorry. Do you disagree with Roe v. Wade in that regard? Well, I, no. I want there to be an abortion. Uh, would, would you Would you prefer Roe v. Wade stood? Of course. So then you would be against abortion after a certain amount of time. Uh, I mean, Roe v. Wade essentially uh, set, set created the viability, the viability standard, standard right? right? So but, then you have a Fourteenth Amendment question, whereas no, I, you would need you would need some kind of government intervention post viability. Yeah, I, I, I believe that doctors should be able to make these determinations and it should not be, we should have a right to an abortion broadly and doctors can make a decision. To, to I, be clear, real quick, I think you're in favor of the overturning of Roe v. Wade. No, I'm not because I but, would but, but, never want to overturn something to go backwards and then no, no, bring no, it up listen. to the legislature where we have be, crazies and Republican the nut over, jobs in the wait, Senate sure, sure, and there's a filibuster. Doesn't, I don't know. Whatever. That doesn't provide us with because the ability of, to codify. I don't know what to say here because I think it's fairly obvious that she's saying that there's more that needs to be done to address the issues with Roe v. Wade, but outright abolishing or outright undoing Roe v. Wade was damaging. Because of the overturning of Roe v. Wade, you now have states like Colorado removing restrictions. No, no, no. This is inaccurate. Um, so Roe v. Wade protected at a constitutional level up to the second trimester for elective abortions. And then right. afterwards, it was it's up to the states. So like, okay, so it's even it's so even, like wow. they Colorado Wait, could have. This is the first. This is the second contribution AJW has had here. I I don't know if that's actually true though. Uh, I don't know about the 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 nitty gritty of Roe v. Wade on that particular subject, but extended this prior to. In mm. fact, Andrew Cuomo okay, did this before. So like, just to clarify that. Okay, never mind. I stand corrected. I thought that it was because uh, I remember reading. Let me um, just look it up. What was I want to see name? if he's correct. He, he wrote about Fourth Amendment kicks in uh, upon viability, and then you have a constitutional right to life and all of these things. And there's questions around now, that. Colorado may have passed that law in response to Roe versus Wade, but they weren't prohibited from doing so. Yeah, it actually seems like he's correct here. It, Roe v. Wade, uh, Roe v. Wade protected 24 up to 24 weeks and beyond, left it up to the states. The, the absolute right is the first three months of pregnancy was granted by Ro, Roe v. Wade. There was minimal regulation on the second trimester and states had the ability to choose third trim trimester. So the first two trimesters were were basically protected by Roe v. Wade. He's actually correct on this. Credit. Credit. Yep. Credit where credit is due. He's oh, correct before. on this. Because Roe v. Wade says... At, at this point, the states have no issue. It's a constitutional issue. And then True. third trimester, which is why Roe versus Wade constitutionally is a ridiculous decision. They're like, it's a state's rights issue because, you know, the Constitution obviously delegates the trimesters in the 57th yeah. Amendment somewhere. And again, Tim, like the, the, the reality is, is I don't like, you know, you've been perfectly nice to me here. I don't really care about you personally. I care what when you say things that are harmful and like wrong, what? like the hoax statement about that wasn't wrong. That was an opinion. It was wrong. It was though. completely factually inaccurate. It's not factually you, inaccurate. You called it a hoax because you know that your audience is going to feed into it. And then you parse it later so you have plausible well, deniability opinion, about that, it. That, but specifically what I said was, yeah. and we talk about it in depth. I think the issue is just you don't watch the show. To be fair, I don't watch Majority Report. Uh, but if, if like, I'm not going to come out here and be like, you said this one time, this one thing. I've not watched the show, so I don't know exactly what you're talking about. But I said, yeah, the idea that you would take a, tra a tragic circumstance like this and then create a political story, put it out to, to the super PACs to try and change laws. That's a hoax. Yeah. Well, OK. Yeah. How about the fact that you called the, uh, the grooming shooter event. in neo the neo-Nazi Texas shooter who watched your program? You called that a false flag. Uh, because and you don't even know anything mm. about that story. I do. It was four, <laughs> four clips of the episode. And you can see in the images he wasn't even subscribed to the channel. Yeah, he, but he watched your show. No, 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 no he didn't. He watched I, one guy. Yeah, have you ever went to those time codes? He he was highlighting specific, uh, and I won't name the guests from the guests. But like, he I've did watch that. your show. Like, this is so like you're saying he watched an episode? Smear. Sure, but do you understand okay, come why? come on. And he posted about that one, that, Who was why, that one guy who watched the Majority think, Report and then commented on what Sam did? Why do you think that that, but he, no, this was a neo-Nazi. Why do you think your content appeals to neo-Nazis? Are you kidding me right now?
No, I'm just wondering why you think that. Have you okay, ever, I'm going to I'm going to do something I don't normally do, but that was an egregious over the line statement where I don't know if you are intentionally trying to just generate clips that are nonsensical or you're just really that stupid. Oh man. The idea that because oh. a Nazi watch uh, he is getting really mad. Actually, you can like literally see the redness. Your oh, show, shit. your show appeals to Nazis is like look if you want to have a real conversation, we have a real conversation. If you want to come well, up here and do exactly what the majority, swag, though, you want to do what the majority report you, does, and exactly why Sam isn't welcome on my and many other shows, you feel free well, to do it. And, and I'm willing to have you on here. Did you know that? You know that? Like, I don't know about you specifically, but this is exactly why people don't like your like your show. Okay. I think people like our show. Yeah, maybe ask why. Well, yeah, a lot of people do like the majority report. Actually, it's quite popular. Why some of these higher profile uh, personalities and networks won't have Sam on anymore. And he can cry. Of him. Oh, they're afraid of him. How about it's because you just claimed that Neo not my show appeals to Nazis, which it he clearly doesn't. Your show. Because this show is predominantly like moderate libertarian leaning types. No, you, but you say don't that. Even watch and it. Okay, look, I got to be 100% real. I I'm sorry. I I got to uh I got to I got to be completely real with Tim Pool here. We've read the comments of his of his show. We read the Do you guys remember when we went through the comments of his show when he kicked uh or when he made uh Ye so mad that like Ye left the studio and his own audience who were visibly subscribers, like people who watch his show were were saying that he was cucked because he wasn't he didn't let Ye be anti-semitic enough. Do you guys remember that? I'm sorry, but Tim Pool needs to seriously, like, uh, I mean, obviously he doesn't care. He knows that his show appeals to neo-Nazis. He knows that that's the case. And he just doesn't care. It's like, y y and, and a, an average viewer can go and look in the comments of his show and see the shit that's being said in there. The, the 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 way that his his uh community reacts when he provides even a little bit of pushback so that he can maintain his veneer he has a problem with that that if he was a serious person i think that he should address like if i ever had that experience if i was if i did an episode of my show where i pushed back on yay for anti-semitism and my my subscribers were uh were like freaking the fuck out and telling me that i was i wasn't based enough and that i was cucked for pushing back on anti-semitism we would be having a community purge i would be banning from my discord from my channel from my user base all of those people who said that i was cucked for for not ha for not letting and you know yay just do anti-semitism it's a serious problem that he should grapple with Sorry, he just needs to deal with it. That you say that because you're trying to draw a line and make the Sirius says I can tell you for a fact his comment section has a ma a not insignificant overlap with the f most far right YouTubers. As part of a research project, I scraped thousands of his and other right leaning YouTubers' comments. The overlap was insane. I would love to see the data for that. I would love to see the data for that. That's incredible. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chariot. I really appreciate that. Chariot says, by the way, totally unrelated, but your hair looks great tonight. Thank you. My hair is finally getting to a length that I'm really happy with. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Really far right people that watch your show feel like their positions are a little bit more close to the mainstream than they actually are. Okay, let's say for let's say for uh, uh, so a you moment. call you called it a false flag, and then I when you were proven wrong the next day, called you said you flag. thought it was funny. Called what a false flag? You called the claims that the neo Nazi shooter watched your show a false flag. I don't actually, know if I said that. that. That sounds awfully specific. I don't have the exact quote in front of me, Tim. But so you don't know what I said? Where did yes, you hear I do. That? I would listen to you. Did you say something like, it sounds like, a, I said, it, it sounds like a psyop to have this profile appear one day after the shooting where it's got like a bunch of screenshots on it or something? I actually, wait, wait, they did, they did, wait, the majority report actually covered this. I want to see, I want to see what they said about it. Did they, when do they play him? Let's see. 
Let's see what let's see what Tim said because they played it on their show. Get killed. Go ahead. Any of the politics from either side is, yeah, we don't want these things to happen. We want these things to stop. We need to figure out what the issue is in our society, in our culture. I genuinely believe it's disassociation. It is, it is a dejected society where individuals don't know or care about each other, and they seek well, validation or they seek to push some extremist ideology. Oh, wait, maybe it's here. Hold on. Do we know or what? What is this? This is this is him responding to shit. That's okay, good. Yeah. We have this from NBC News. What we know about the slain Texas Mall massacre suspect, Mauricio Garcia. Garcia, who had a tactical vest, was armed with a rifle and a handgun. A senior law enforcement official said, authorities said he was a suspect. Oh, I'm sorry. What's that behind Tim's show? Oh, he's just got a couple of weapons there. All right, go ahead. Sorry. Just uh, look it. No Nazi sympathizer. Now, this story is, it's a tragedy. It's unfortunate. And um, we have, unfortunately, too many of these stories that uh, end up happening in the media. Or I'm sorry, that end up happening and then end up hitting the media. So, I mean, the first thing I just want to say. Wait, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Can I get some clarification on that? The problem is we have too many of these stories in the media. No, no. I mean, too many of these stories that happen that end up hitting the media. Like, we, we, I'm sorry, the media should not be media covering? Yeah, the, yeah, I guess. I mean, the problem is that they're highlighting the We should only be covering that... stories when nine people get killed. Go ahead any of the politics from either side is, yeah, we don't want these things to happen. We want these things to stop. We need to figure out what the issue is in our society, in our culture. I genuinely I believe it's disassociation. It is, it is a dejected society where individuals don't know or care about each other, and they seek validation or they seek to push some extremist ideology. And then this whole thing creates a recipe for disaster. And I'll put it simply, I think it's multiculturalism. And what? not the idea Whoa. that people of all different types are holding hands on the rainbow. It's that you have different communities stacked on top of each other. Yeah, you won't, yeah, I could. I could control F the transcript. Wait, how do I get the tra tra transcript on here? That's right. I forgot they do transcript. Here we go. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here it is get into the psyop no ammunition something's going to happen yep go look, ahead. What, look, what, look what you made us do revealed texas gunman staked out massacre mall to monitor peak times three weeks before killing eight and posted details on russian social media alongside photos of nazis guns and ammunition you see here's where we get into the psyop no one knows Psy if this russian social media profile is actually but it actually belongs to this guy a Bellingcat researcher named Eric Toller. Yeah, no, he's literally saying that the entire neo-Nazi allegation is a, a PSYOP. Without any evidence, he just calls it a PSYOP. He, he doesn't say, guys, let's be careful. He literally says that the media is doing a PSYOP. That's actually worse than what Emma said. Emma was actually being easy on him on the show. He actually went further than that. He's denying it wholesale. He's saying he thinks this whole thing is a PSYOP that's being manufactured by the media. Just said, I found this profile that looks like it's his. In fact, I'm pretty sure he even said I didn't verify it. I don't know. Now, the photos that are Can coming out, I don't want to show uh, many of them considering the sensitive. I'm sorry, nature but by this point, this has been verified. This has been right. verified by multiple. Yeah, it's literally been verified all over the place. It's, it's fucking stupid. So again, just so we're clear, this is from the coverage that he says, oh, you didn't actually watch it. They watched it on the show and he is actually more aggressive. He claimed not that the part of, of, not that the part of the guy watching his show was a PSYOP, but rather that the guy being a neo-Nazi entirely was a PSYOP. He, he argued that the media created a, do you know what a PSYOP is? Can we be honest? A PSYOP is a, is a term for psychological operations. It's when like a CIA type Type agency engages in basically a conspiracy to to mislead on mass the public that is an insane allegation and he presents zero evidence for it nothing he just says well i don't know about this so i think it's a psyop because it makes him and his show look bad because it makes his political uh, affiliations look bad what a fucking weasley liar uh sure it really does sound to me like someone told you to say things and you don't know what you're referencing. 
I'm not shocked that that is the only way that you're going to try to react to this. <laughs> to, well, to react to what? It, like, okay, no, this is fairly obvious. So I'm willing to bet Sam was like, hey, ask him about this and say these exact things. No, I things. came up with, I mean. Come up with original thoughts. Wait, can, it can is I my ask? original thought. So no, it isn't. It's, it's some, guy, some guy posts a screenshot of one episode of a show he's not subscribed to. Wait, and you Emma did that episode. That was Emma's episode. What the fuck is wrong with Tim Pool? Tim Pool has S Sam Cedar brain disease. He's actually, his brain is broken. This is one of the stupidest and most insecure things you could possibly say. Just looks so embarrassing right now. You think that's an attack vector for something political, but it's a personal snipe that has no, has it's no bear. It's actually pathetic. One of the most pathetic things about watching Tim Pool's content and reacting to anything that Tim Pool does is that I have to remember that there is actually an audience that is willing to eat this drivel. It's sad. It's actually sad. They're so... Their, their, their standards are so low. They just want to have their ideas confirmed. And so they're willing to let somebody who's this insecure, this boring, this fucking much of an NPC, tell them how to think. It is genuinely pathetic. It's like, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. It's like watching a bunch of people be force fed garbage from a garbage truck on any of the arguments we've made the entire show. I, I disagree. Yeah, yep. true. As Sirius points out, it's also incredibly sexist to be like, oh yeah, you wouldn't come up with this on your own. Only a man had to tell you what to think. That's fucking stupid. So, you disagree with what? With I, what? Elaborate. I disagree that it has no bearing on what you've said throughout your entire show. Like what? What did I say? I, this is what, come on, come this on, come on. the claim let's, that let's you hear made. It. Let's hear it. I believe that your program appeals to a right-wing audience. And there's a reason that the neo-Nazi shooter watched your program. And, and how do you know he watched the program? Because he posted about it. What did he post? Tim. What did he post? He posted uh, p uh, parts of an interview that you did. No, he didn't. You're wrong. He had four <laughs> screenshots on his phone. From you the don't same even episode. know what you're talking about. And all you can do is laugh and no, say, No, it's because you get some specific guy, to obscure Some the guy you posted it one thing one time, and that's the only argument you have. It wasn't one time. It was four times. Actually, actual Justice Warrior just admitted that it was four different ones. And now, now he looks like an idiot because he just agreed with actual Justice Warrior pointing out that it was four separate times. Did you go to the time codes that were in that episode? Because I did. I ran this down. And one of them was a clip of Elijah Schaefer. And, like, weirdly for this, like, neo-Nazi uh, Hispanic shooter, he, like, it's Elijah saying that we shouldn't be emphasizing race tattoo. specifically. No, no, he's a neo-Nazi Hispanic shooter. Right, but Tim called it a false flag and then corrected himself the next day and then said he thought it was funny after a mass shooting. I think that... I mean, people someone told you to say this and you, you don't actually know what you're talking about. Man, this looks so bad for Tim. This looks so pathetic. Those were his actual words. Even his own fans have heard him say that. They heard him laugh about it. This looks so fucking bad for him. I think that it's not shocking that you think that based on my joke. Okay, you're not saying anything anymore. But, like, I screen grab when I, because I do YouTube clips, so I will screen grab a time code so I know where to go later. So, like, when I saw that, I knew, or I had a feeling, because obviously he's dead. So, or was he captured or was he killed? I think he was killed. Yeah, so he's dead, so he can't tell us. But, like, I think people screenshot, because this is why I do it, and you can find them in my phone, moments in things so that they can go back and reference no, that. He, it wasn't just, he posted them. He posted those timestamps timestamps to an episode of Tim Pool's show. That's genuinely concerning. And he had commentary on there as well, if I'm not mistaken. Can we bring this up? Hold on. Let me see if we can get them here. I want to see them real quick. I want to see if we can find an article. Let me just see if I can get an article real quick that has the screenshots. If anybody has the link to it, I would really appreciate it. If any of you have them on hand. This is a direct quote of Tim Pool. I gotta be honest, I think it's funny and I really just don't care. That was to him having his clips in there. Also, both of them were wrong. Oh, here we go, we got it. Hold on. We got it. We got him here. This is a Nick Fuentes clip here. Then we got Timcast IRL. 
We got TimCast IRL again. We got a different part of TimCast IRL and a different TimCast IRL. So he's got four of these. I want to see if we've got the commentary. Do we do we see him talking about the do we see what he what he posted alongside those? I don't know if we've got them. I don't know if we've got that information here. Big fan of libs of TikTok. <laughs> Timcast, this seems like a veiled CIA threat. Oh man, Tim's Tim's fans not doing so great. Yeah, sorry, Tim. It seems pretty concerning that somebody would be screenshotting your show a whole bunch of times right before they do a mass shooting and that they would be uploading those to their social media profile. These were This wasn't just like, you know, his photo reel. This was things that he uploaded to a social media site. I wish we could have gotten the, uh, the commentary that he put with those pictures. Anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. We got to get through this. It's and I ran so down both of those time this codes. Is, this, Neither look, one. I get it. But look, man, this is the majority. Of... It's been long. One second. It's been a while. If you are here, make sure that A, you are subscribed to Demon Mama and B, that you have pressed like on the stream. I'm going late for you. We're at nine hours of streaming today. I have given you all the treat of treats. So much Demon Mama content delivering on my promises. And just so you guys, just in case. You ever worried whether or not Demon Mama is a devoted content creator who makes all kinds of cool stuff for you? Just know, this is the proof right here. So make sure you're subscribed, tell your friends about the show, and help me grow this wonderful viewer-supported show. Let's go. Port. This yeah, is but why, it, is it, why, it, it is a nasty smear. Like, you're doing it on purpose. I will without... say, I'm getting really, really, really tired, though. We have another, like, an hour to go. I don't know if we'll do the entire conversation, but I'm going to go a bit longer. A little bit longer. And then I got to stop because I have to rest. But let's keep it's running. It's not a political content. statement. It's, it's a, not a political it's a argument. Fact. You're like, he watched an episode of her show. I'm, I'm sorry, of his show. Like that's, there, was uh, that, there was that one guy who posted Sam Cedar a whole bunch. Remember? The guy who killed all those people at the bar in Ohio? I, I don't remember that case specifically. Why, why did that guy watch Sam Cedar so much? Why did Gavin... Why did, why he's just... By the way, he's just making that up. He's just completely making that up. Tim Poole can't grapple with the fact that a shooter posted multiple screenshots of his show, so he just makes something up out of his ass. Completely made up. That is just completely made up. It's complete. It's pathetic. This is so embarrassing. This has got to be one of the most embarrassing Tim moments of all time. And that's, that's saying a lot, because Tim Poole is a pretty embarrassing guy generally. Why do you guys appeal to mass shooters? Why do mass shooters There's a talk about difference. Sam Cedar being so inspirational to them? Why did, Ga why did Gavin why, Long... Why, why is Emma Vigeland inspiring mass shooters? <laughs> why did Gavin Long... Why are you okay with, with, with uh, porn being shown to children? Bye. Look, if you want to have, if you want to make play a game of nonsense statements for political brownie points, feel free to do so. But I'll say it again. Tim, I didn't mean to upset you. This is exactly why Sam is not welcome on my show. But it's not something that I just one day was like, you know what, I'm, no, it's because I had serious conversations with networks and other high profile individuals. And I can love- you name, Can you name the high profile individuals? That's their business. But I absolutely love how the response is, they're scared of Sam. It's name like, no, one. they despise him. One, He's bro. a bad faith actor who, do, who does exactly what you just did. Yeah, We're having a totally. conversation about scientific research, data, my position on what I like about DeSantis, and then you go, your show's for neo-Nazis. It's like, okay, dude, are you stupid? I, I'm just stating facts. Have you okay, heard? this is like lowbrow. This is what this is why you guys have 170 Dave Rubin videos. Do you think the average person cares about Dave Rubin? No, I'm no, just trying to No, but you guys get it. clicks by doing it. It's hey, fun. how about you guys run a video about how Tim Pool is get got into an argument? Wait, how would the if the average person doesn't care about Dave Rubin, why do they get clicks for doing Dave Rubin's content? If it, Dave Rubin doesn't matter, why are they? Why would it be a good strategy for them to do Dave Rubin videos? Unless actually people do kind of care about Dave, Dave Rubin and they want to see him get debunked because he's a stupid liar. With a pro-lifer about how he's in favor of pro-choice policy. You didn't run that, did you? Because you guys are grifters. This is what you do. I can invite you on for a real conversation and what do you do? Your show's for neo-Nazis. This is why you guys don't get invited places. Because you're not having real conversations. I don't really care about getting invited places. Yeah, right. So go live in your grifter echo chamber where you guys can play songs with bad audio and then say, whoopsie. I'm sorry, that that audio thing really upset you. Wait, have you ever well, covered the Gavin? What upsets me is can when I, I talk I say, about, when I talk about like, Ronda Sanders making- actually so red right now. This is so embarrassing. 
This is one of the funniest meltdowns I've ever. This is this has got to be one of the best Tim Pool meltdowns I've ever seen. Fake things. Also, is do they do the whoopsie? I think that's. I think they are mixing it up. If I don't think Sam Cedar does a whoopsie, I think. I mean, they do it now. Tim, they they put on him saying whoopsie, on on their soundboard now. Um, but. I don't think they did a whoopsie. If I'm remembering, they have a I don't think so. That's the one that they do. Whoopsie is from uh is from Mortal Kombat. Sam always does the I don't think so. They do that one. And they do the shofar. Do they do a whoopsie? I know it's toasty, but nobody fucking says that. Shut the fuck up, you idiots. Everybody thought it was fucking whoopsie at the time. Nobody thought it was fucking toasty. You people suck. Commenters suck. I don't think they do whoopsie. To, to trick people? And that's what you guys do? It's kind of like, yeah. We yeah, do, how about that? We do AI images? When you run audio that sounds bad to make a nonsensical video where you're like, Tim Pool sounds like Nickelback. It's like, wow, dude, you got really bothered about that. Again, the insecurity just leaking off of the, the, the insecurity leaking off of Tim Pool right now is just it's visible from space. It, it's qualified as light pollution in, in 20 states. What you're doing is just trying to generate rage drama. It is internet blood sports level garbage. It doesn't answer any questions about the questions of pro-life and pro-choice, progressive tax policy. It doesn't answer questions. Wait, somebody actually, wait, okay. Gayfesh says above, they actually did do a mod to put Tim Pool's whoopsie into Mortal Kombat. And then Biceps and Bikini linked this. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, nobody would make this if they didn't, it, nobody would make this if my, by the way, I'm just gonna take a second, nobody would have made this if they didn't think what I said. I told you, everybody thought it said whoopsie because the audio in Mortal Kombat is ass and nobody knew whether it said toasty or whoopsie. Lots of people thought it said whoopsie. Anyway, let's watch it. Oh. Oh. Whoopsie. Oh. Oh. Whoopsie. Oh. See? Ah. Sam! Whoopsie! <laughs> oh. Ah! Oh. Whoopsie! Yeah, that's fucking incredible. All right, that's good. That's good as fuck. That's fucking good as fuck. Questions about how we're gonna protect or, or, or we're gonna help kids. All it does is drum up support from your base so they can hoot and holler and give you clicks. Then you complain, we can't get any advertisers. Maybe it's because you make lowbrow drama garbage. No, I mean, the first hour of our program is uh, the one that's free. For neo-Nazis, you mean? The one where that mass shooter watched Majority Report? Is that what you're talking about? The Good one, Tim. Good one, Tim. Literally making things up. Tim literally making things up to try and pivot away from the fact that a, a literal neo-Nazi mass shooter had, tons, had four fucking pictures of his show on his social media. Oops, sucks to be Tim Pool. Maybe you should deal with the Nazi problem in your audience. Again, let me just reiterate. It's not just the clips that were posted by a neo-Nazi mass shooter. That is a factual thing that happened. It's also the fact that if you go to Tim Pool's videos and you browse his comments, and apparently, though I haven't seen this data yet, I have heard that if you cross-reference the commenters to uh, far, far right videos on YouTube, you will find that actually there's a huge overlap. But I can tell you, a cursory observation of Tim Pool's comments will reveal a sure lot of neo-Nazi posting in the comments. Let me just tell you, once again, I invite you, go look at the entire Kanye West saga of Tim Pool's show. There are multiple episodes where his own fans, people who've commented on his videos before, are just sitting there ragging on him because he didn't let the anti-Semitism keep happening. They said he was cucked for pushing back on anti-Semitism. That's, that's a problem that, that the majority report, the demon mama doesn't have, but Tim Pool does. Tim Pool has that problem.
the the first hour of our program will usually was that have guy's name? social security and medicare um, I can't remember that like kind name. of discussions or we'll essentially talk to an expert on say policy in latin america that kind of thing the stuff that's behind the paywall and then gets clipped is stuff where we respond to right wingers we want to get into the he got really mad when i said that he got kicked off of um, bob's burgers Oh, oh, no, that's funny. He, but, that, that, you know, he was joking, right? He was being sarcastic. I didn't watch the clip. I just know that. <laughs> yeah, he was he hilarious. He, he, he didn't get kicked off of Bob's Burgers. That's the joke. It's a joke that he got kicked off of Bob's, Bob's Burgers. Bob's Burgers, he played a minor character on Bob's Burgers. He was never kicked off of Bob's Burgers. The character just hasn't reappeared because he played a minor character on Bob's Burgers. So he makes a joke that they wrote him out of the show, his minor character. This has been an ongoing joke in that Sam Cedar has done for a long time. Tim Pool is an idiot for missing the joke. He doesn't even understand what he's talking about. T Sam Cedar was not kicked from Bob's Burgers. He only voiced a small character role. It's so stupid. It's so embarrassing and stupid. First of all, the creator is one of his best friends. Sam's like. I don't. Sam came to me and said he was upset that they kicked him off. They were, they were moving um, his role from the show. I think he was joking. But used to be at TYT, and Gavin Long, who was the Baton Rouge shooter, watched, reposted, and did reactions to Young Turks videos. A lot of them were straight misinformation. There was one in particular where they were going after a cop who slammed a woman, which probably a cop acted inappropriately, but they wildly speculated that it was a black woman. It turned out to be a white woman. And there was a call in the video of like, what, what do you do if you see a pregnant black woman being assaulted by a cop? That's TYT's problem. Were they posting pictures of Emma Viglin? That's like a, first of all, that would be TYT's problem. Just because Emma used to work at some point in this company, that doesn't make it Emma's problem. That's not Emma's show. They're not taking pictures of the Emma Viglin show. Gavin Long said he's going to step up. You can also let's just let's just remember, even if it was the Emma Viglin show, do you want to know what episode uh, 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 was being screenshotted? It was an episode where Tim Pool invited neo-Nazi Elijah Schaefer onto his show. So maybe if you don't want to attract neo-Nazis to your show, maybe don't platform neo-Nazis on your show. If Emma Vigland had a show uh, where a random shooter took pictures of her show without context, that would be one thing. But if, if Emma Vigland was hosting a neo-Nazi on her show and then that neo-Nazi ended up, go and then a neo-Nazi who was screenshotting the episode where you had a neo-Nazi on ended up going and doing a showing, a shooting, that would certainly be an issue of concern. This is just stupid. Watch these videos, they're available online, and he shot- Yeah, I don't think Emma worked at TYT in 2013. She joined during the 2016 election cycle. Yeah, well, th again, this is desperation. This was, yeah, I mean, I wasn't. That wasn't my comment. What, what I didn't say. About, oh, no, no, hold on. I didn't what, say it was your commentary, but you're saying screenshots on this guy's phone. Big problem. I got to bring it up right here. But they have, weren't screenshots on his phone. He posted them to a social media site. You fucking lying piece of shit. Have you ever covered at all what inspired Gavin Long? Uh, because he I, killed four police officers. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't. I, that wasn't my coverage, so I don't know. I was basically. What in New about York. the guy in Dallas? Remember him? Uh, that was that was a different uh, shoot. Sam, no, I I'm sorry. Right. I really didn't mean to trigger you. I'm sorry. No, I'm just. But I'm just curious where your standards are. Like, have you gone Look after the host clip, on the Young clip, Turks for clip that harvesting, one? Clip harvesting, clip farming. Is that what you're doing? I don't know what you mean. It, like, okay, your demeanor Ooh. changes. But oh man, this looks so bad for Tim. This is so cucked. I bet the right wingers have been making fun of him for this. Actually, I'd be curious to see his own comments. Interesting. I would love to see it. I bet he's getting made fun of by right wingers for this part. For the show, to to uh, all of a sudden now you're going. Uh, what do you mean? I'm so sorry. I triggered you. Oh, jeez. Well, I mean, I get it. You I, guys I'm are just, gonna make clips. I'm you guys are do... lowbrow grifter drama garbage. I'm trying to. You want to talk about the merits of policy? Tone, so maybe that it calms you down a little bit. You want to talk about policy, or do you want to just insult people? I I would love to talk about policy. So so uh, continue, Sean. Yeah. So the if if. <laughs> 
if screenshots. You want to talk about policy or insult people? I would love to talk about policy. Well, go ahead, go ahead, uh, other guest. Which are of clips that weren't even him speaking. Is Tim Pool inspiring this shooter? Also, then yeah, how come you've see. like I'm never done this commentary at a place you used to work at of direct inspiration? Like he saw a clip, cuts to himself saying, "I'm gonna step up because I'm the real one." I've like, never heard of this. So. Oh, that's interesting that you never heard of it. Well, that. so so it happened. Why do you think it why do you think it is that your former program appealed to mass shooters so much? I cover right wingers and I know that right wing terrorism in this country dwarfs any kind of left wing terrorism by like a nine to one figure. What does that do I might be ask? underestimating. Because I cover right the real threat in this country, which is right wing terrorism. Sure. So I'll ask again, I guess. Like why do you think it is this mass shooter was inspired by your former program? He's re he's trying I would have to so look into here, it to, to make a smart. Do you feel bad that he was inspired directly and admitted he was? I sure. I mean, I, I, I again. I it's not. Do you take responsibility? It wasn't even my program. I, I worked there, but yeah. So you were you were you were providing material support. Wow. You see, I don't, I don't you know if she you, was you, there at the time. Uh, no, to be fair to you, Sorry, like, I'm just I'm just scrolling. I'm just scrolling through. Um, I'm just scrolling through Tim Pool's uh, 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 Twitter right now, and all he's tweeting about is weird seething. An extremely weird anti-trans post. Was. But I will really say, funny, um, it is interesting because the Young Turks did cover this shooting. And even though, again, reacted specifically to Young Turks videos covering the cops very poorly, propaganda inspired him to commit this violence, in my opinion. If you want to talk about the Young Turks, you should talk to them. I, 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 would, yeah. I would love to at some point in my life. But so he does this, but the Young Turks coverage of it called him just a sovereign citizen. So this yeah. would be categorized as that right-wing terrorism, this even is, though this, he was this is the thing, right? inspired by a left-wing news organization, Let's, specifically left-wing. I'll figures. do it. I'll do a semi-segue, and I'll talk about you know what what irks me is like uh, the Burisma scandal. Thank for instance. you. Thank you. Sir. You know any any kind of reasonable assessment over the story pre Hunter Biden anything is pre is pretty shocking, but it's not something you see in any of these quote unquote left-wing media sources for like no reason. I think the 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 best example is. It, it is so omitted from the narrative that That's when we had super, Hunter Avalon on the show, Thank you. he didn't even believe that Joe Biden admitted to, to engaging in the quid pro quo. And so I played the video for him. You know, so so what, what what's troublesome is... What are you talking about? He's talking about the fire the prosecutor clip from Joe Biden, specifically. Right. If you but I'm not that. surprised you're not familiar with it, right? It's, 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 it doesn't exist in the I left's mean, echo chamber. Well, I, it, it's funny. You just call the leftist echo chamber... I mean, I am a consumer of leftist news, wing, news sources, but also I read right wing ones just to check in on it. Uh, centrist news organizations. I think this is a very, very specific echo chamber that I can't speak to. The, the, um, the, the Burisma the, thing, I, 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 I look, I'm not going to defend Joe Biden. I mean, I'm a leftist. I'm to the left of Joe Biden. But this story, I mean, it's pretty much a nothing burger. Uh, the Durham investigation essentially had yeah, or not, not the Durham, Durham Durham sorry I misspoke the investigation being done in the house right now is like looking into the whistleblower who's suspiciously gone missing and they have an FBI tip for 17 different calls it's actually great too that I, I think that turnaround was a really good move on her part being like sorry I'm not familiar this seems like something that's very specific to your echo chamber is a really good point because this is something that actually should be used against Tim Pool all the time. He likes to say that other people are in echo chambers um, and then he will talk about something completely deranged like, oh, what about New York City subway pushing incidents? And you'll be like, what? And he'll be like, yeah, don't you know about that? Everybody's talking about it. And you're like, maybe in your bubble, bro. Maybe everyone in your bubble is talking about the New York City subway pushings. Uh, maybe everyone in your bubble is obsessing over Hunter Biden's penis and Burisma, Burisma, Burisma. But actually, nobody can't gives a, sh a, a fucking flying shit about that stuff outside of your bubble. It's literally only the MAGA bubble that cares about the Hunter Biden shit. Remember the Hunter Biden laptop obsession? They are, the right wing is fucking obsessed with, uh, with the Hunter Biden shit and no one else cares because it's not all that big. It's not like that big of a story. It's been look. It's being looked into, uh, and everybody who's looked like it's just it's just, it's not even that. It's like I don't know, man. What do you want me to say? The laptop you think was Hunter Biden's laptop, and you've been obsessed about it for a million years, and there's basically nothing seemingly of consequence here. They were bringing it up when Wagner rebelled because they were like, "Oh, the Wagner Group rebellion is a distraction from Hunter Biden's penis." So stupid. 
battles between Hunter Biden and this oligarch. That's weird. It's all completely gobbledygook made up. But at the same time, it, I, that, I, but that's, why are you defending Joe Biden like that? No, like, why not, why not just say, yeah, sure. Well, you know, I'd, love, that I'd love to criticize him on things that I think are actually real, like the fact that he's continued Trump's border policy and ramped it up, well, what, honestly, with Title 42, where he did, he, have, did, he did uh, sunset that because if, it was if, a part of the emergency and during COVID. Trump, but he's largely, largely continued militarism around the border. Um, if other if Trump is like the that. nominee, do you think he'll win? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, no, I no. don't. But I think he will be the nominee. So wouldn't you rather have, say, Bernie Sanders as the candidate for the Democrats? Of course. Obviously. So isn't it your uh, isn't it in your interest then to say, by all means, investigate Joe Biden? If he's corrupt, get rid of him. Well, I don't think sure you can do an investigation. Everything that's come out so far seems like it's bullshit. But I would rather criticize him on things I find more substantive. Like so this is, again, J Tim Pool showing his bubble. Emma literally very easily criticizes Joe Biden, like severely, severely criticizes Joe Biden. He's just, yeah, but what about Hunter Biden's penis and laptop and Burisma and Burisma, Burisma, Burisma? It I can reveals, tell you definitively. It reveals fact, Tim's bubble completely. Actually, it's it's not it's not BS. I mean, certainly there are political elements of it, but I mean, the, Joe Biden. This is what I was talking about with Hunter Avalon. That Joe Biden's literally on camera saying that he threatened to withhold congressionally approved loan guarantees in, unless they fired Victor Shokin. Victor Shokin signed a sworn affidavit saying this was intentionally to protect Burisma from no, the this was. Do you guys remember when, you remember when Tim Pool and all of the right wingers tried to make fun of the Russiagate stuff by being like Vladisovich uh, referred to this thing and they would make fun of uh, Rachel Maddow because she would just read off a big list of Russian names and nobody could remember any of them? Do you guys remember that fucking shit? Every single right winger being like, oh, here comes Rachel Maddow. She's going to tell us about all these unknown names. He's literally doing the same thing right now. He's just listing off a bunch of names without context and going, what about Hunter Biden's penis? Stated U.S. policy to fire Shokin. This was not a quid pro quo outside no, of Joe the United Biden States. Joe Biden said, if you don't fire the prosecutor, you're not getting the loan guarantees. That That is illegal. Okay. That that the, the vice president does not have the authority to withhold loan guarantees from a foreign nation that have been approved by Congress. It was not. It was not because they were investigating Burisma. It was because of European policy. From, well, intent is from, immaterial. But you're claiming it's a quid pro quo. I, 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 it, it is a quid pro quo for Joe Biden to literally say on camera, which he did, fire the prosecutor no, or you're not, not getting the loan. No, it's, it's not. It's, it's actually. This is so, weird. No, no, defending it, it, it is. <laughs> he might. So the president might have the discretion to not do that, and Obama might have said, well, they "You Trump for the same thing. You represent me in that regard." So it, it's illegal for him to do that for the investigation. But like you guys are off into like a different point. The point you were making originally was that Hunter had never seen this clip, but you've seen the clip that they're referencing, right? Because he was making an no, echo chamber. I've read about it, but I read. Do you know the that's in, that's is... very interesting because that clip was are plastered you familiar... all over. No, okay. I, I, are you familiar I, with Gazprom? I mo that was plastered all over right wing Telegram channels and my Discord. But I'm not in a bubble, obsessing over Hunter Biden's laptop and some fucking incomprehensible noise that may or may not have been anything at all that has been apparently extremely looked into and yet nothing meaningful has come out of it. Mostly, I, mostly my workflow is I read like 50 pages of news before the show every day. I, look, look, honest question, like, are you familiar with Gazprom? No. Are you familiar with the Cutter Turkey Pipeline? The, sorry? The Cutter Turkey Pipeline. Oh yeah, yeah. You are? Yeah, I've heard about it. Okay. Uh, are you familiar with like U.S. Uh, uh, intelligence policy uh, 2009 Syria and how this relates to Gazprom and Burisma and all this stuff? Um, vaguely. I, I don't understand how if you have an understanding of that, you would just be like, all of that's true, but the Joe Biden stuff's not true because it doesn't make any sense as to why you would defend Joe Biden in that way. I just think the I don't think she's in, I don't think she's defended Joe Biden. I think she said it makes a whole lot of it's a it's it's an imparsable noise and there are better things to criticize Joe Biden on if you're a serious political actor. Like trying to parse out whether or not uh, Joe Biden as vice president uh, uh, incorrectly asked for the firing of a prosecutor in the Burisma Turkey Cutter pipeline incident in a region of Ukraine with a corporation in Ukraine, Hunter Biden's laptop and penis. Like, I don't know, man.
I don't know. Investigations largely. That BS. doesn't sound to me like she's defending him. In fact, it sounds like she was really willing to criticize Joe Biden, but not in the way that fit with Tim Pool's stupid bubble. So I'm not defending Joe Biden. No, but, but I mean, look like, into the investigation. If they if want we, to do some sort know. of special counsel investigation outside of the political process where it's not a Republican witch hunt, I'm, f I'm all for that. But I, 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 here's what I'm trying to understand. You Wait, look say at that. Listen, he just he she just said I'm totally fine with him being investigated as long as it's not some stupid political witch hunt. That's a time wasting event. Think that the quid pro quo was not illegal. You think it's not. That it was stated European policy by the government. You, and so, so and you're connecting it and saying it's a quid pro quo based on a variety of different assumptions that have not been able to be proven yet in the midst of the investigation well, in, I, in the I, House. This, I, this I can't understand, right? When, when Donald Trump called Ukraine, it was called a quid pro quo, whether it was U.S. policy or not. It was. The president sets the policy. So if the president calls Ukraine and says, I got this video of Joe Biden, I'd like someone to look into it, he's impeached under a quid pro quo, right? Whether, whether it is or isn't. Because he was withholding aid to Ukraine. Hey, just like Joe Biden tried to do, right? This was not, this was stated U.S. policy at the, the time. And the president sets U.S. But, policy, but, but right? if it's quid pro quo, what was he getting in return? Yeah, but Joe Biden wasn't the president. Right. I don't know. What, Joe whatever. Biden? Yeah. This is all just nonsense. Yes. He said fire the prosecutor. The no. prosecutor had 12 Pre Presumably it would be the prosecutor that was investigating Burisma, but I do it want What to was Biden getting in return? But, 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 right. Okay, so I'll tell you. First, the Victor Shokin had about a dozen plus open investigations oh. into Mykola Zlachevsky, the founder of Burisma, and I believe into Burisma as it. By the way, this this section probably has his right wing bubble going abs. They're probably coming their pants as they hear him say Burisma, Shokovsky, uh, fucking turkey cutter pipeline, Joe Biden, Hunter Biden penis, Hunter Biden laptop penis, Hunter Biden crack cocaine. I bet they're fucking coming themselves. But every single other person on the entire planet, their 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 soul has died and they've gone to bed. As, as an ancillary factor. But I, I just want to say real quick, impeachment doesn't and necessarily- And was not investigating Burisma. He was. But it, it was not. Yep, yep. He, he, okay, dude, look, if you don't know about this, just don't say no. I can tell you definitively, he was. It was a huge issue. There are a dozen plus uh, uh, investigations open into, into uh, uh, Victor, uh, Michael Zlachevsky. Yeah, you're In fact, you're the misrepresenting point it. Zlachevsky fled the country. Zlachevsky fled Ukraine amid these investigations upon Shokin's firing, returned to Ukraine. After Donald Trump then says, I want this. Wait, it says here, I just did a quick search as to whether or not Shokin was prosecuting Burisma. And it just says flat out with a citation. No, Shokin was not prosecuting Burisma. While there had been an investigation, Shokin's former deputy, Vitaly Kasko, had said that it was dormant at the time of Joe Biden's intervention. So shokin's own team said that they were not act actively doing an investigation there had been a previous investigation but it wasn't active when this happened uh okay i don't know that seems pretty straightforward looked into slotowski flees again okay but like, what it's was weird the quid pro quo what was biden getting in return they would they presumably what? they would stop investigating Burisma, no, 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 which no, no, is no, where no, that's his son not, that's not at. it. The quid oh, pro quo oh, is uh oh, oh, oh interright infighting. Fire the prosecutor or I will withhold aid. Okay? You can say it was That's not proven. But she's asking he no, said no, it. no no he did say that. But she's saying it's not proven that he did that for personal gain. She's saying yes. where, it doesn't matter. where's that's the not, benefit for Biden? But yes, I, but that's just, not illegal. Can I clarify then, a legal point Trump's real quick? Trump's impeachment was, was not illegal either because but, what but was his impeachment? That's the exact point I want to clarify. Impeachment is not actually a real legitimate criminal process. It is a political process. I so, understand that. So like him being impeached for this like doesn't actually say anything to Trump, the legality. Trump was not following United States policy. Biden he was. He sets the policy. He's the president. Congress does. No, they we don't. We have separations of, uh, of powers The president in this sets policy. Not for, for the executive uh, branch. Congress isn't the one making not calls for, to foreign not diplomats. Not for aid. Oh, man. Oh, no, Congress, man. They, they allocate the aid, but he's able to pull it under circum certain circumstances. It's, it's not just that. Foreign policy is set by the president. Uh, yeah, are declared a by Congress. huge portion of it. Right, 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 right. Okay, no, nothing's absolute. Yeah, yeah. But the idea wow, that we would- even the right-wingers can't agree on Hunter Biden's penis elect a president to negotiate on our on our interests when it comes to the issues of military and then we would be like but in this one instance he doesn't have the authority what do you mean he, he's the oh, one man. who sets the policy no no he has the authority it was Barack to... o the argument is that joe biden wasn't we've been listening to them go back and forth about hunter biden's penis now for like 20 straight minutes i just want to point that out talk about a bubble engaging in a quid pro quo because it was a policy of of our administration yeah obama had a policy a quid pro quo is when you get something personally in return 
So something for something is what it means. Right. But the nature of the investigation that they're looking into is they're trying to say that there was a bribe a via Hunter Biden. And there has been Joe no, and Hunter. They right. Right, right. But there has been no actual evidence on that front. Well, I'm not super concerned about what they may be investigating currently right now. I'm talking about it is the, the whole point of this was I can't Bro, believe we're even arguing come it right on, now. man. But she, like, she, I don't she, understand why why you who someone who has every reason to oppose Joe Biden are like he said it on camera. But you know what? It's fine. What, I don't get it. Like, just be like, yeah, what sure. What do you mean? She just straight up dug into it. She just said she doesn't find the Burisma case compelling. That's all that she said. She said the the Burisma case makes no sense to me and I don't find the evidence compelling and you have been having a meltdown because your bubble is obsessed with Hunter Biden's penis. Fine, I but guess. But she's making a very specific point that for it to be a quid pro quo, you have to explain how Biden benefited from this. So like, it's not necessarily that she's disagreeing with what you're saying, although she's saying it's part of policy, but she's saying you have to actually, to complete this, like basically you're two thirds of the way there, that final but, third right, is how he is, benefited. Biden was I'm not, not in talking opposition about to congressional benefits. policy right. but that's and what she's Trump was. Talking about. I just I'm talking about Trump Joe was, Biden the threatening to withhold loan guarantees goes against, right. it's not legal. But you're, you're talking past each other because she's saying that. Sirius says, here's some real quick, but here's some graphs my friend of mine compiled on right wing terrorism. It so far outstrips other terrorisms, other, other types of terrorism in the past decade. It's not even close. Yeah, it's off the charts. Oops, that's my chat. That's not the one I meant to grab. I meant to grab the other one. That was my chat. There we go. Terrorist attacks from 2007 to 2018. Confirmed right wing attacks, blue. Suspected right wing attacks, light blue. Total attacks. All, so here we go. This is total right wing attacks. This is the dark blue line right here. Total light right wing attacks outnumbers all others, except for in this one year, the unknown. Look at all of the other types, which include jihadist, confirmed black nationalist, suspected black nationalist, suspected left wing, confirmed left wing. All other types are vastly outnumbered by the right wing attacks. People injured in terrorist attacks, number of people injured or killed, number of people killed. Damn, that's actually super interesting. I would love, that's that's a little, uh, it's a little, far, we were talking about that before. Holy shit, you're still streaming, Diva Mama, you're insane. Yeah, I decided to go hard today, but I'm gonna have to stop soon. We're reaching the 10 hour point, which is honestly a little too far. We should finish this, but I'm getting really tired of Hunter Biden's penis, so we might call it call like, it. There's a here. reason for that, that, and it's not corrupt related. But that has nothing to do with what I'm saying. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, I know. I'm just clarifying where you guys are miscommunicating. Like, here, this, the is vice where, president this is where I'll say I have differences with Joe Biden. First of all, I can't even like understand why he hasn't or didn't when he had a, a House and a Senate that was Democratic push for any kind of single payer or socialized health care. I wish that that was happening. Um, he's certainly to the right of me on the border. Uh, the fact that he broke the rail strike, that's something that I'm deeply- Also, by the way, real quick, compare this to compare the way Emma Vigland is outlining her disagreements with Joe Biden's policy to the way that Tim Pool waffled around and avoided stating exactly what he agreed with Ron DeSantis on. In opposition to, and I'm happy to discuss those kinds of things with you. Um, but like, uh, I, don't, I really want to get into the Burisma thing. It came up as like an example of, I don't understand why like, there's like a tribal need to defend Joe Biden. It was the, the she wasn't defending Joe Biden. She spent most of this segment ragging against Joe Biden. She just says your fucking Hunter Biden's penis obsession is stupid. Okay, the, all the, right, everybody, the, we're getting close to the end. It's not tribal. <laughs> it was U.S. policy to get rid of corruption in Ukraine. Shokin was not investigating Burisma. Biden was in uh, concert. He was continuing U.S. policy. Trump was in opposition to it. That is the difference in the hypocrisy that you're trying to highlight here. Hmm. You guys are going to go in circles on this, but why I have to you... pull it up. But like, because we covered this a long time ago, I, I, I didn't want to do the whole Burisma thing. But my point was simply that, like, having well, covered this to such it, extent, bro. it is confusing to me the need to defend the Bidens on this one. I just like I just criticized Biden in a bunch of different. But I don't ways. understand why you're saying there was no investigation. Like, you're just oh making. Oh, my God, he can't get over it. OK, everybody. All right. We're calling it here. We're calling it here. I'm not listening to them to go going back and forth on Hunter Biden. I'm sorry. I we don't, we're not going to gain anything from this. We've watched 2 hours of this conversation. 
Uh, we've reacted to a ton of it. I've commented on a ton of it. Uh, the conclusion, Emma Vigland is incredibly, incredibly good at dealing with the likes of Tim Pool. Tim Pool came across looking like a highly insecure loser who didn't have any sort of preparation for this conversation. Uh, he was belligerent, annoying, and most of all, insecure. He continually obsessed about Sam Cedar. Uh, he continually accused uh, uh, Emma of comparing him to Nickelback by faking the audio, even though she straight up said and addressed that outright and said, we didn't change the audio at all. I'm telling you that it didn't sound that great, but we weren't changing the audio uh, to like screw you over or anything. And he's still fucking obsessed over it. In my opinion, Tim Pool looked like a total loser in this conversation. Actual Justice Warrior may as well have not been there. Literally the only thing that Actual Justice Warrior did was be the racist goblin in the corner dropping crime statistics misleadingly uh, when he could, you know, make it seem like uh, like mass incar- so that he could advocate for mass incarceration and so that he could advocate in favor of stop and frisk, which is an insane thing to do. Uh, the racist goblin, nobody likes him. Why was he even there? Who gives a shit? Uh, Tim Poole got absolutely clapped by Emma Vigland, in my opinion. And Emma Vigland is a treasure. Uh, I uh, really appreciate the fact that Emma Vigland has a spine and is willing to go to bat for trans people and is uncompromising on that. I'm serious. I seriously appreciate that. If any of you are going to send any clip of this stream to Emma Vigland, let it be this. Emma Vigland seriously appreciate your willingness to stand up for what is right when it comes to trans people, to hold to your guns, to stick up for a community that is being insanely persecuted right now. And as a trans streamer and, a, and somebody who's been working in these spaces now for some time, I really, really appreciate it. I also really appreciate it as a longtime listener of the Majority Report. Uh, I, I, I think it's very encouraging to me to know uh, 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 that trans issues are taken seriously at the majority report. It actually means a lot to me on a personal level in addition to on a political level. That's my conclusion of the Tim Pool versus Emma Viglund debate. If you all had a good time with me tonight, I've been going really, really long, really hard for you all tonight. So leave some comments below, show some love, like and subscribe, and consider supporting the show. Thank you all for being here tonight. This has been a very interesting react, an infuriating react at points, but I gotta say I'm, I'm really impressed with Emma Viglund's performance uh, and uh, I'm happy to have gotten to react to it on stream.